আড্ডা আমাদের চায়ের দোকানে আড্ডার মতো আমরা একটু কমফোর্টেবল একটা ডিসকাশন যেখানে সবাই আমাদের মন খুলে আলোচনা করতে পারি তো উই ফার্স্ট উই থট অ্যাবাউট অনলাইন অ্যাসেসমেন্ট and then immediately i told rabia that let me talk to manzurul abedin because i still remember my quick visit to his place his hospitality his wife and manzurul abedin hosted me for some couple of hours and it was such a lovely uh, trip and still uh, i remember that so we wanted to use his expertise and his experiences i guess he will be talking from his experience and we have planned to contextualize the entire concept of the online classes and online assessment so uh, this is since this is the uh, first akaniya adda that means akaniya adda 1 we also plan to have series of akaniya adda once in a month you can always propose to be a speaker anyone you think that you want to share your experience please send us uh, an email or notification we'll be more than happy to arrange the session for you uh there is something uniqueness of this event my experience of working with number as in bangladesh i guess you know that uh we really don't get school primary and secondary teachers on board this time we especially got at least three teachers who were uh who have been teaching for a long period of time we have um, tahmina we have tarikul we have imdad uh rabia will actually introduce formally i'm not going into the details but i wanted to highlight the uniqueness because we thought that the moment we talk about an english association it can be really vibrant participatory and inclusive only if we could add our teacher at the periphery at uh, the rural areas and the primary and secondary teacher because i always tell them you're the insider the way you understand the issues it is better than what we are at the private university because we teach at a state of art institute we really don't have number of issues that we'll be talking today this adda actually uh, arranged because of for you by you and of you because we thought that you could <coughs> enrich our experience so with that short note about the association and the academy adda i hand over to rabia bin tehabib who will actually run the session and moderate the rest of the event thank you rabia thank you very much sir uh, as i have already told that this idea of this academic adda came because we were discussing that why don't we have the voices of the teachers uh, because whenever a webinar is arranged because of its structure we get to know the paper that is presented by the speaker or the thoughts that are presented by the speaker and then there are few questions random questions that are answered so the idea of academic adda was generated because we wanted the want to hear the audience's voice we wanted to hear how do they think of the solutions challenges possibilities so what experience do they have to share with us so uh, and for that reason we today for this first session of the academic adda series we today have with us the practitioners so if you look at our our speaker and the uh, pool of discussants they are all practitioners they are the ones who make it happen in the classroom so we need to know what they are thinking what what do they want so we may come up with the policy makers later but we wanted to start with the um, practitioners who will tell us the actual picture of the classroom actual picture of the online classroom or online assessments and for that uh, we are happy to have uh, dr munjul abid in class our very own dr munjul abid in class and uh, i will talk about uh, his uh, designation and the abstract that he sent to us uh, i'll read it out in a minute but before that let me tell you the full of discussions that we have with us we have from the uh, school we have uh, mr tarikul haq who is the assistant professor english at jinayda cadet college we have ms tamina sm tamina who is the assistant head teacher of gk model high school gajipur and we have mohammad imdadul haq who is the assistant teacher of dhaka uttar mohammed school high school uh, he is basically now teaching at biani baja um, school i guess and uh, so let me tell you some of the rules of the house 
we request the participants to keep their videos off and mic definitely the microphones off. If you want to uh, turn on your video, do it, but that, is, that basically distracts uh, the um, speech of the program. We, you can turn it on towards the end of the uh, program when all the uh, discussions and the speaker will be done with their talks, so we can uh, have your videos on. It's a request. We're not uh, saying that you cannot keep it on, but it's suggestible that you please uh, keep your videos on. And uh, we will have your questions in two forms. Um, we have a Google form that we'll share with you in the chat box where you can write your question. And our co host Akibur and Atikur, will uh, let us know. And even we can pick your questions uh, to the speaker, whoever you address it to. If it is general, we can uh, give it to anyone um, in the discussion board. And then uh, we also have the uh, option of Zoom where you can raise your hand and ask the question uh, yourself. Whatever you do, please, uh, first of all, raise your hand or write in the Google form. Do not straight away turn on your microphone. Uh, raise your hand or write in the uh, Google form. Um, let me tell you the, the uh, basic design of today's. There is no design because, as Saida Sarah has told, this is an informal abda. So we want it to be as informal as possible uh, and also uh, to have our minds open for this, to share our experience. So um, we do not have a structured program, but what we have that, uh, first of all, Monju sir will um, uh, talk about his position paper that he want to, wants to share with us today. And then we have some questions that will be taken from the audience participants, you. And remember, you are uh, the uh, people who are going to make this uh, event successful because this ABDA is meant for you. It's for you. So you will, as uh, Sadhusa told, that it's for you, by you, and of you. So it's you who will ask the questions. After Mundusa's session, we'll take some questions, and then we'll move on to the pool of discussants. We'll start with each discussant, where after each discussant talk, you can ask two questions. So we cannot, um, at the, at the, uh, during the event, we cannot um, welcome more than two questions after each discussion, but towards the end of the program, we'll have more than 35 minutes or 40 minutes at our hands to ask questions, where you can ask your questions if it is not answered uh, during the event. So uh, let me now move on with uh, the abstract that was shared uh, with us, with us uh, by Mondrusa, uh, and his paper is titled as Assessments MA COVID-19. So he has written it from first person point of view. So I will read it and uh, if I make use of I, just take it from the point of view of Monju sir. Uh, so uh, Monju sir, uh, if you uh, know or, or have seen the um, banner, he is working as the senior lecturer in education and society at the University of West London. And he is the chemistry faculty of education University of Cambridge. I was not his direct student, but it is my privilege to welcome him to this session um, because we share the same institution. Uh, he taught in East West University. Uh, I am not sure how, for how long, but maybe for a brief period of time uh, before he left for University of Cambridge. Uh, so the abstract that he shared with us, uh, I'm going to read it out. So the abstract starts from it is now fair to say that no country in the world was prepared to deal with COVID-19 when the outbreak went global in February to March. Contingency planning is difficult when one is unsure about the damage an invisible enemy can cause. Educational service providers from early years to higher, higher education are fighting the battle of creating, maintaining and improving teaching and learning provisions for students. He teaches uh, higher education students and he does his research with schools in the UK. The immediate context and examples that he is going to present in his, um, from his work, but it is possible that he will transport his examples and insights and adapt them, adapt them to a different context, especially for us. Help Not Hinder has been the best of assessment strategies in the UK schools and universities, face prolonged closure of face-to-face -face teaching with all traditional examinations suspended. Universities rely on a variety of methods coursework and essay portfolio, one-to-one -one online formative assessment, classroom presentations to turn into poster presentations submitted online, setting of flexible deadlines and feed forwards for long written assignments. For all these, however, 
Communication is the key and so is home readiness. And this is where the equity issues come in as a big challenge. Universities and schools have tried setting up additional support and personalized monitoring for students. Currently, contingency planning has been underway for September and beyond for a second wave of the virus attack as the schools or universities prepare to open using the concept of social distancing bubble. We cannot do away with exams. Parents believe in them. Is a concern coming strongly from disadvantaged schools and regions amid rising worries about equity, validity, and transparency of online assessments. As a solution, self-assessment and home-based assessment are considered, and schools or local authority are in touch with parents or carers regularly to motivate and train them. Where this is not possible, so local media and newspaper, television, radio, and mobile networks must come forward to reach out to the hurt to reach households with help from local government. National benchmark is, benchmarking is nearly impossible in these methods, but at the least, it can be ensured that some students are not pushed too far behind by this pandemic. Ultimately, as he concludes, he stresses emphatically that the key strategy needs, needs to be consulted as many stakeholders as possible, need to, need to be cons in consultation with as many con uh, stakeholders as possible, students, parents, teachers, and medical experts, as education providers adapt, change, and hone their services. Long-term school closure is no option, and no student deserves to fade out from their other. Communication must be established by all means. So here uh, ends his abstract. So he's going to talk about this paper in detail in a bit. I'll just announce another very important uh, notification to everyone that today's uh, academic ADDA doesn't have any medium of instruction, any fixed medium of instruction. If you are comfortable speaking in Bengali, please ask your question, share your experience in Bengali. If you are comfortable uh, making a kind of uh, English and Bengali together, please do so. But we want to hear your point of view, your suggestions, your experience, your problems, your concerns. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, so let's welcome our speaker of the day, Dr. Monjiru Labede. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, I'd just like to start uh, by sharing my screen. So... Um, So I hope everyone can uh, see my PowerPoint slide, the first one. Um, thanks a lot for the intro and uh, the abstract. Um, very happy to be here and very pleased to be a part of this forum. Active Bishoy, Jita Bio the abstract Bola Hoi Nishira Hoche. যে আমি কিন্তু বাংলাদেশের মফসলে বড় হয় একজন ছেলে এবং আমার বাবা ছিলেন বাংলাদেশ পল্লী উন্নয়ন বোর্ডের ডাইরেক্টর এবং উনি দুই তিন বছর পর পরই এক জেলা থেকে আরেক জেলায় যেতেন এবং আমি আমার দশ এগারো বছরের স্কুল জীবনে সব মিলিয়ে তেরোটা স্কুলে পড়েছি এবং আমি শুরু করি ঢাকা থেকে তারপরে চলে যাই বরিশাল সেখান থেকে যশোর সিলেট সিলেট থেকে ফিরে আসে আবার ঢাকা বোর্ডে ফরিদপুর এরপর মাদারীপুর নওগা কুমিল্লা এবং সব শেষে গিয়ে ক্লাস টেনে আমি মুন্সিগঞ্জ থেকে এসএসসি পরীক্ষা দিই এবং সব মিলে তেরোটা স্কুলে আমি পড়ি তাকে আপনি বুঝতেই পারছেন যে বাংলাদেশের মফসলের স্কুলগুলো এবং পরীক্ষা পদ্ধতি সেসবের সাথে বেড়ে ওঠা মোটামুটি পরিচিত আমি শেষ পর্যন্ত ইন্টারমিডিয়েটে ঢাকা কলেজে আমি ভর্তি হই এবং তারপরের থেকে ঢাকাতেই এবং ঢাকা কলেজের স্বর্ণযুগ তখন প্রায় শেষের দিকে বলা যেতে পারে এবং সম্ভবত আমি যতদূর যতদূর জানি যে ঢাকা কলেজের স্বর্ণযুগের সর্বশেষ ব্যক্তি আমি যে ঢাকা কলেজ থেকে বাংলাদেশের মধ্যে প্রথম হয়েছিল সমাজ বিজ্ঞান বিভাগ থেকে এবং তবে একটা বিষয় এখানে বলাটা খুব জরুরি সেটা হচ্ছে যে সমাজ বিজ্ঞানের ছাত্র হলেও 
স্কুল বা কলেজে সবসময় দেখা যেত যে গণিতে বা ম্যাথামেটিক্স আমার নম্বর খুবই ভালো যেটা একটু আনিউজুয়াল সাধারণত আমরা দেখি যে সমাজ বিজ্ঞানের ছাত্ররা সায়েন্স সাবজেক্টে খুব ভালো থাকে না বা অতটা কনফিডেন্ট থাকে না কিন্তু আমার ব্যাপারটা ছিল ভিন্ন and that brings me to my next slide uh, about who am i and ever since i started my phd like after after uh, my studies from english department hakim university and also about 5 6 years of teaching at different universities in dhaka i have always been very multidisciplinary and my phd is, is mixed methods and the main instrument for my phd was a survey simply because i'm very good with uh, mathematical data or num numerical data but at the same time i think i'm also very good with subjective data the shop shumi amar ekta tendency thakto je survey ba mathematical data collect korbo eki sathe সাবজেক্টিভ ডেটাও কালেক্ট করবো মানুষের সাথে কথা বলবো এবং ইন ডেপথ যে সমস্যাগুলো সেগুলো বের করার চেষ্টা করবো অ্যান্ড আই থিঙ্ক আওয়ার টু ডেজ টপিক অ্যাসেসমেন্ট ইজ ভেরি ইন্টারডিসিপ্লিনারি দ্যাটস বিকজ অন ওয়ান হ্যান্ড উই ট্রাই টু কোয়ান্টিফাই স্টুডেন্টস পারফরমেন্স উই ট্রাই টু ব্রিং আউট নিউমেরিক্যাল ডেটা ফ্রম টেস uh on students performance or children's performance but at the same time as teachers our job our responsibility is to give them feedback something that they can take home something that will motivate them to do better uh so that's the that's the two prongs that's the two wings of assessment which i think is mixed so, so it has this both objective or numerical element and at the same time it has this subjective element and and i think this understanding of what assessment is and what assessment can do to the future and mindset of a particular student uh, is extremely important and if we think about our assessment scenario from early years to higher education school theke ekdom university porjonto jodi amra dekhi i think that understanding has become even more important let's start with what i faced in the last four months uh, in my uh, in my uh, workplace so i was teaching three modules uh, in in mid in mid march when uh, the outbreak happened uh, in europe and in the uk so i was teaching uh, a module named critical debates in education uh, at cambridge and i was teaching uh two modules uh one on social justice and another one on uh multi multiculturalism at the university of west london and a uh classroom presentation which is the mid term exam of one particular module i was in middle of taking that and on that particular day when uh the all kinds of um school closures happened in the uk uh, i had a presentation day with my students which is the which was the midterm exam so i found that out of my 20 students 10 arrived and then i checked my email and found that all of them all the remaining 10 or 11 uh said that they can't come because it's too risky and it's too unsafe so i was in middle of making an adjustment between uh taking 10 classroom presentations and thinking about something else for the remaining 10 now what i and what as a department we came up with is to do a poster presentation instead only two or three could say that they can self record their presentation at home and send it to us but but obviously home situation and classroom situation is different so the reliability issues is there but we came up with this alternative method that maybe they can present their data their points in a poster and then submit the poster to us so that was the alternative test that 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 we thought could be 
are almost as good as taking a classroom presentation. The universities in the UK were keen to demonstrate to students and parents that the system is still running, so no universities closed. What we were doing, that we were um, trying to adapt to the, the online mode of teaching almost immediately from the next day. Now, that was perhaps slightly easier in the UK because the online element is very strong, um, even when the normal situation prevails. So we use platforms uh, such as Blackboard. At Cambridge, we use Moodle, but with, with, uh, with modern universities like University of West London, we use Blackboard. And we do use podcasts and, and, and teacher videos, even in normal times. So it was relatively easy to, to, to move from classroom teaching to online teaching, which we did almost in 24 hours notice. Um, one might argue that, that how, how effective they have been. But at the same time, we might say that, well, let's not talk about effectiveness at this point, because it is important that, that, that we tell or we give students the message that the system is running, universities are not closed, so their studies are not hampered. Now, that is a key message for all of us, I think, to, to tell students, to tell parents that, that we haven't come to a standstill. We haven't stopped things, but things are still ongoing and things are improving. So correspondence with students have become extremely important. Uh, we would send out, um, you know, literally hundreds of emails, maybe five a day, something like that. Some students who complain that they don't have a good internet connection, so the problem exists in the UK as well, one of the richest countries in the world, don't have good internet connection, or they don't have a, a peaceful, good place to actually sit in at home to do some studies. So our, our team, our student engagement team was in touch with the students over the phone a lot, you know, to solve individual students' problems. So correspondence has become extremely key um, you might remember from the abstract that I said that the communication is very important, so which must be established and no students can fade out from the radar. Now, what works for whom? You could, all, you could already see that we were trying to create a personalized system. I agree that the reliability, the validity question is there, like whether a classroom presentation can be equitably compared with a poster presentation or not. But we had to create a system where everybody participates, where, like I said, nobody fades out. So we had to find out what works for whom. Many students said that they are now living with three people in one room, and it's absolutely impossible to, to work, for, you know, work for a poster presentation. So, so we have uh, gone for flexible deadlines flexible resubmissions or reseed options so that it works for some students who would need more time than they would normally need. And, and finally, reconceptualized progression. Now, that has been very controversial, uh, particularly for students who are graduating, in other words, students who are in the fourth year. Uh, how would you grade them? Different universities have looked at it different ways. So the best method, I thought, is, is, is by looking at the students' progression um, reports from the, from the previous years and to look at uh, that student's module teachers and, and supervisors' report and then try to fathom that how he or she normally works there is a valid point that some students do tend to uh, have better results in the final exams compared to the midterm or the earlier exams. Now, if that is a pattern, then you'd be able to find that out if you look at that student's last three years reports. Now, the, the good thing here is that you could actually get a lot of data about a particular student 
Um, there is a lot of records about the data. For instance, the module teacher would write a report. Um, every single coursework, every single essay that the student has submitted from the first day of the university, there will be feedback recorded online. Um, attendance will be recorded online. If um, one student is not attending classes, student engagement team will be making communication with them. And, and that particular um, communication would be recorded online. So you, you can actually go back to the student's previous recording and find out the pattern. And in order to predict what would be the final grade uh, for that student, provided that no final exam is not going to be taken. So, in other words, we had to reconceptualize progression. In the UK schools, in British schools, there is no there is no annual exams. So I don't know how things are in in, in Bangladesh at this point. annual roll number but in the UK you don't have that so it it based on the the teachers report if you would like to use the academic term for that it's called formative feedback so it's based on the I think about year four or class four the the teacher would write quite a long report about 10 10 pages but well, they have a particular format, a rubric that they can change for individual students, but the teacher would write a report on every student's performance, even at year three, year four, year five. And that would indicate where the student is. And uh, there is no final exam like that. So that was helpful for, for this country because there is, you don't have so many exams. Maybe if you have many exams in your system, in your school, maybe this formative feedback is a structure, is a model that you can try thinking much more seriously about. And COVID-19 gives us the context to, to think much more seriously about it. Now, talking about formative feedback, I have made a list of um, things that you can do. Most of these things um, I have done, not necessarily in the context of COVID-19, but, but in other contexts as well. So I'd like you to take a few seconds to have a quick look at them. And you can come back to uh, ask me questions on them if you'd like to know more about it, or write to me to my email address if you want to know more about it. I've give you, given you an example of, of, of how we have changed the classroom presentation to a poster presentation. There are other ways of looking at much more all the year round kind of performance um, assessment. So coursework, now many of these are, you know, much more suitable because I teach at, uh, I teach at, uh, I teach at universities. So I teach university students. So many of these methods are tailor-made for university students. But you can also think about how you can use them even at school levels. So for instance, uh, if you look at the left-hand side column, and if you take a look at the three point, the, the second from the, the second item from last, take home science bags, discovery materials. Now this is used by some schools here. What they did, that they have created um, a resource bag or a resource packet uh, with, with, um, with scientific experiment uh, items. So they have made bags like that and just post them to the, stu to the students' home addresses. And then on the phone or via email, they, they would send out instructions to the students and the parents that how they can use or do the science experiments at home, which they would do in the science lab in the school. So I'm talking about secondary schools now. So some of you may have a question that, well, uh, you can do with online teaching in certain subjects, particularly 
you know, uh, the humanities, but how about much more applied subjects like science? That can be a solution to that, that when you just simply post the items. You might wonder that who would give you so much money? Now, that is a problem that we can discuss later that how we can solve it. A few other points, I think they don't really need much more explanation, but I would like to talk a bit about the last point, which is online quiz or MCQ. Now, that is probably the first thing that uh, come to our mind, but, but I said, and I was, uh, I've been told uh, from my university and, and, and uh, from my seniors to use online quiz with caution because of the reliability issue. And, uh, and I'm also convinced that it is probably much better option to not to use online quiz or MCQ in order to assess or test uh, students formally. What is the alternative? I think the alternative is formative feedback. And you can, you can just look at some of the points, they're all more or less uh, around uh, different kinds of formative feedback and what formative feedback can do. I'll talk a bit more about uh, um, formative feedback uh, in specific, in specific uh, later. But you can see that these are some of the points that I have learned from um, my experience of dealing with COVID-19. Predictive grades, but not counted towards results. Now that's for most of the uh, school years, because in the UK, you only have national exams at two points, at the very end of year six, and then at year 11, which is comparable to our SSE. For all the R, all the other years, you don't have any annual exams. So uh, you can give you students or let their parents know about the predictive grades, but it is not going to be counted in terms of forming any kind of annual result or class result. For university students, I have used feed forwards, meaning uh, before they would submit, let's say a 5,000 word report, there will be long feed forward sessions where you would be actually telling them some of the commonest comments that you would normally make about an assignment like this. In other words, the students would be aware beforehand about some of the commonest areas that are normally flagged by teachers, which is called feed forwards. Personal communication. So you need to be prepared to make as many phone calls, as many one-to-one -one web, uh, web calls with individual students if they say that they would need it, if they say that they would benefit from it. Different students work in different ways. Resources management, once again, you need to send out to students much more personalized um, number uh, of uh, materials. To, uh, to students. So no longer you can work with just, you know, keeping maybe 10, 15 um, handouts for the whole class. Perhaps it's much better now to look at every student's personalized needs and send out resources to them um, in whichever way they feel comfortable. Flexible deadlines and resubmission option is something that I have talked about already. The final point, but perhaps the most important point, is because we are moving to formative feedback, is the teacher integrity. That you need to be prepared to spend a bit more time in terms of reading a student's work and then writing long detailed feedback, which are personalized, not just a formulaic structured uh, kind of uh, feedback. So teacher integrity, would be needed in terms of standardizing feedback. In other words, this standardizing means uh, to look at individual students' needs. Now, from my points, you are probably thinking that formative assessment is, will solve all problems. Uh, it, it's not. Uh, 
particularly from the, the developing country settings that I work with. I currently work with uh, head teachers uh, in Kenya and Morocco. And what I hear from them is that schools have simply dismissed the idea of formative feedback. Parents said, uh, what is it? Because they are so used to uh, the annual exams, the annual exams, the exams, the tests with grades, with numbers in them. So they just simply can't think uh, ending the year without any exams. That's why I wrote that in environments where summative tests, which is the traditional tests that we do uh, with numbers, where summative tests have high visibility, teachers often feel compelled to teach to the test. And students are encouraged to meet performance goals, to perform well on tests at the expense of learning goals, that is to understand and master new knowledge. So it is this last line where I would emphasize the most that the learning goals rather than the, you know, rather than teaching to the tests. Now, I have talked about the details about uh, formative uh, feedback, which is now necessary. I mean, the cartoon that I have included is, is, is about it, is the, is the comment on the formulaic um, comment of feedback on tests. In, now, for the COVID-19 situation, you need to be prepared to write much more detailed and thick uh, feedback to the students. Now, as I was saying that why is formative assessment a silver lining in this situation? I mean, if you're interested, you can check these two particular um, references, which I found extremely useful. Um, I think the points that I have written here are self-explanatory. Remember that I have started with mixed methods, how assessment is both. So it's important that the students, children have a sense of completion, a sense of progression, which will make them confident about doing the, the next level of, of correction. So it's the point that I have written here as encourages positive motivational beliefs and self-esteem. So uh, the sense of progression is not going to come just by looking at that I have scored three A's or four A's. But here, the sense of progression will come by reading your feedback when the, when the child or when the student will read your feedback and will see that there are clear elements in the teacher's writing and the teacher's comments that suggest that he or she has improved, he or, he or she has progressed. A few more points about it, consistent and timely, something that I've been uh, working uh, on a lot uh, for myself, because I think uh, I typically had a much more relaxed approach to, to looking at scripts and, and writing short and concise feedback that used to be my approach, but I'm trying hard to change myself. Uh, for the last two years, I think I've improved in terms of, you know, by looking at student comments and student evaluation, because, because I think in terms of looking at your own student evaluation, the most important points to learn from the teacher comes from the criticism of the students. So it's easy to, to be flooded with praises from students and live in a self-glorified world, but real learning actually comes from the criticism, which are normally few and far between because students don't, don't really want to criticize teachers. But I have found from my experience that it's the criticism that helps you grow uh, as a teacher. Like I was saying, give students a sense of progress, give brief, clear, actionable feedback. Now, that's the most important point that the students need to know that that uh, these are the areas that he or she can work on you know, to get to the next level of grade. And avoid thinking one question, one answer formula. Now, this is particularly true for subjects like science or geography. And avoid recipe feedback, which means following a formulaic way of doing it. Uh, using a rubric that you change 
for every student, just to change a few words, and then you send it to a different student. Now, there is a quick way of doing it, but it's probably not the most honest uh, way of doing it. So, um, so I suggest to avoid recipe feedback. Now, these are some of the questions which I thought that you might be asking. So maybe you can take a few seconds and look at the questions and some of the possible uh, answers that I have. How about national exams? Now, I think um, I'm just uh, asking my moderators, do you please let me know if, if you think that I am uh, already over my time limit. You can see uh, take five more minutes, it's all right. Um, how much? Five minutes? Five minutes. Yeah, yeah, should be fine, yes. So I'll just quickly go through the questions. If you want me to give more details on the answers, I can do that during the ADDA. Uh, how about national exams? How would boards decide secondary, higher secondary certificates? Uh, from my experience in the UK, I would say that the answer would be, could be mock finals, which is known as test exams in Bangladesh. Uh, mock finals at school, school portfolio of the students. I've talked a bit about it before. How would boards ensure schools teachers follow a similar and comparable model in testing? Now, there is a controversy which is currently taking place in the UK. The A-level exams, uh, the A-level results were just published and there has been a lot of controversy that some students have um, provided too good indication of grades for the students to the board so which means and we all know that different schools different colleges take their tests in different ways looking at my days at Dhaka college for instance i mean there was a tradition in those days in Dhaka college that the test exams question papers would be extremely difficult extremely hard uh, and 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 there was a uh, there was a feeling that if you get 700 in tests, like the test result, uh, the test exam in Dhaka College, if you get 700, you'll get 900 in HSC. So something like that. So it would be extremely difficult. I remember that I got um, the highest mark among the college in, in Bengali and English. But, it, but in Bengali, I got only 51. And that was the highest mark in the whole college, like across the science, social sciences and commerce. And in English, I got 61. And that was the highest mark in, but in the end, in HSC, you know, um, my Bengali marks were in the 70s, English marks were in the 80s. So different colleges, different schools take the tests in different ways. That is the problem. But if, if, if the boards decide the final, you know, the final marks based on the test exams, then how, how could you ensure that, uh, you know, the reliability among different schools and colleges tests. Can the boards trust schools on their integrity and honesty in producing student results? I'd say that the, the boards can before that. I mean, in order to make teachers and schools uh, honest, the board can also think about some of the measures or policy decisions that they can take, like abolish naming and shaming of schools. This is true for British schools as well, because there is a school league table in England. Schools to create peer evaluation bubble, which means one school will look at the result of another school. Online moderation of test results. Now, that is something which is happening at the university level uh, here, uh, the online moderation of test results. And you, you appoint not the second examiner, but also third and fourth examiners, and do it online. Um, and and then teacher voice heard and empowered. So you need to hear from individual schools teachers that how they have, what were the methodology or what were the thinking behind uh, the test exam, a question paper setting will be deal with. Now, the final thing that I'd like to talk about is perhaps the most important thing, but how would schools ensure that everyone is treated equally and given the right and sufficient opportunities to thrive? I'll, I'll just let the, let the image say, you can say that the, there is a difference between equality and equity. 
and in the in the equity part you could see that you have created personalized resource management in order for individual student to reach their individual potential so um, in the context of covid 19 assessment it would be designing or thinking about individualized or customized um, testing module or testing structure uh, for individual students now this is my closing activity <laughs> so um, there's a purpose that why i'm using it uh, you, you can see that we can, we can see a boy and if i ask you to think about this particular boy and what are the things you can just you can just think about it think about him on your own what are the things that come to your mind first what can you deduce about this child from my experience of doing this activity with students i've seen that most students would come up with comments like this his house is different he's not wearing any shoes he's homeless he's too poor to go to school he lives in africa and so on now for the covid 19 life we we need to think about life differently for covid 19 teaching and learning we need to think about life a little differently so instead of like we are making this observation on this particular boy we can try to think about this boy in slightly differently like this focus on the similarities rather than differences he likes playing with toys he wears t-shirt it's warm he likes to draw he's about nine years old he has free time so that's the difference in thinking so the takeaway message from this activity i would say would be don't think that your school is situated in a place where they just seem they don't even have mobile phones they don't even have um you know uh, internet the internet is too slow they're out of the you know the network or problems such as this look at the things that they have and use them and some of the points that i've already mentioned uh, are there in the abstract and you can see here like for instance i was really surprised to see that the local media like newspaper television radio and mobile networks they're not really helping in terms of children's and this is not just a comment to bangladesh i mean this is a serious comment to the african schools to indian and pakistani schools i mean it's more or less the same the newspapers and television they're going about their business as usual but they could actually take a huge part and i'm not just talking about the national television channel but all channels so newspaper television radio and mobile networks can reach out to every nook and corner of a remote country and can help students so that they're not faded out of the radar something that we have said already and uh, some other points would be thinking about home readiness in the uk uh, they have sent um, chromebooks with internet connection to different homes where children were reported not to have any computer or internet in order to keep pace with what's going on in the school in canada they sent ipads to different homes you know to keep pace with online teaching and learning now in bangladesh or in similar contexts we may not be able to do that but we can use the discovery bags remember the example that i've uh, given you you can send exercise materials um handouts printed handouts post them to those uh, the local leaders can also help to disseminate or distribute these items in other words we may not have internet but we still have snail mails we still have people who can uh, take an item to the home where it needs 
So finally, to conclude, I would stress that it's important that we must communicate, we must establish communication to every single child. We can't just think, of, think about households that have internet connection and a computer and, and feeling that we're doing good because the online classrooms are doing well, but we need to also think about the equity, that how everybody will do well. So I'd like to stop right there. And uh, in my last slide, you would find my email addresses. I'd be very happy to, to answer to any for queries later on. Of course, you have time for the next one hour to ask me any question but I'm more than happy to come back to you if you just write to me about any of the things that I was talking about. So I'd like to stop right there. Thank you very much, Mr. Sir. Uh, Thank we have, you. We have a few questions. Mahabubu okay. Rahman asks, as in our country, we know the problem of internet is huge. In that yeah. case, final assessment throughout the country for giving final grade, what can be the best alternative assessment? Um, like I said, like I said, I mean, it has to be, of course, in Bangladesh, we're talking about huge numbers. Well, that is, a, you know, there's a big issue. Some of the things that we can solve here um, can be possible on paper, but in Bangladesh, because of the huge number, it's impossible. Now, I think that the best option for national exams would be, would be to first let the school send their children's final exams results, test exams results. And then those of you who are familiar with cricket, then education boards can design a methodology. Like in cricket, they have designed duckworth lewis system they can design a methodology to decide that how far they would um, take the marks sent by the schools like in the uk what happened i was saying that a level results were published yesterday there's been a lot of debate i mean it's uh, still going on that um, the results that the schools have sent showed that if those results were the final results, there would be a 22% increase in the A star grades, which is an impossible uh, thinking, which means that the officials had to, to create a design and methodology to find out the real results. So over-reporting is, is common in the UK as well. We know that all schools are given a name that how many of them uh, have got A stars in Bangladeshi terms, how many of them have got CGPA, you know, the, the golden CGPAs. So schools are decided on that. So which school would let the board know that I have five students who are failing? So it's the same case here. So the methodology that, that they have found, or they have created, which has been debated now, is to look at individual students' performance beyond the test result, look at the school's last 10 years' performance, and, and look at the, the performance portfolio of a student that the school has. Now, by which I mean that if you have a student X, you will look at uh, that student's uh, midterm exam result, the first term exam results. You would look at that student's year nine results. And you would look at any other teacher-based feedback that the school may have records of, of that. Yes, so I mean, that's the best solution that I can think of. As you told, the predictive grades. So teachers yes. have the records of students' performances throughout the year or the yeah. years, so they can be, do the assessment based on those as well. All right, yeah. so let's now move on to Indi Tarikul Hart. I was looking at the pool of discussants and then found that there are too many hops 
We have okay. uh, Sandadul Haq, Tariqul Haq. I have my husband, Anwarul Haq, at home. So too many Haqs today with us. Um, so let's now move on to Mr. Tariqul Haq, uh, who's working at Jinada Cadet College. Over to you, Mr. Tariqul Haq. Thank you, Ms. Rubaya. No, Rubaya. Rabia, sorry. So can you hear and um, audible to all? Okay, so yes, good afternoon yes. to everyone. And I am feeling a little bit, um, what, uh, I'm feeling a little bit out of water after having a very <laughs> wonderful presentation of our respected keynote speaker, Monsieur Lavedin. And it was actually a silver lining and we could see all the hopes ahead of us. And so now at this particular context, and Ms. Rabia asked me to present my context regarding the assessment, online assess assessment. So I'm feeling a little bit worried whether it will be suitable enough to place at this moment. Anyway, I have no other option. So I'm going to share uh, my screen. Okay, so, uh, so is it uh, visible? Hello? Okay. Tarek is fine. Please okay. continue. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So, as far as uh, you know, that is, uh, this is actually a contextual review of on online assessment, second term, that is in our college, the Genetic Ed College. So, this will be, uh, first I will tell about that, the at a glance, that means we used free cloud platforms. So, and those two, uh, combination of two, that is Zoom, and Edmodo. So Zoom is very common to all of us and we are on Zoom now, but Edmodo is not that much uh, known to everyone. So this is a good one. Uh, it will not be for the live uh, interactive classes, but it can uh, cover up most of the parts uh, of assessment. And I will tell it later on. So now Zoom meeting IDs, we have created six Zoom meeting IDs and it became six live online classrooms. So we have the host, the teachers, we have our ID and the cadets or the students, according to their classes, they have separate login ID. So, and it is also very uh, restricted and secure. So number of live online classes per week, according to our routine, new routine is 146. Remember we have six classes and we have some also humanities uh, group. So advantages on Edmodo, uh, we have quizzes and assignments. We have just heard about the formative assessment and we have to be cautioned about MCQ. So quizzes will have a few options for you. You can go for quiz, that is MCQ, you can go for uh, short answer questions, you can go for fill in the blanks, you can go for true false, you can go for also matching. So an assignment, of course, you can go for the big answers, write-ups or any sort of tax based on mathematics science or anything in a subject. And there is also grading system on both cases. At the same time, the assignments will be giving you the opportunity to give the feedback to the learners. And you can individually give that feedback and that will be recorded also. So this is a good one. And then uh, special use of Edmodo, this is you know, COVID-19 pandemic going on. So two things are very much important for us, especially for the cadet colleges. It is ensuring the attendance of the cadets uh, on online classes. At the same time, we have to collect their health reports. Twice, in a, but every week, we collect their health reports that our cadets are in good health or not. If there's any problem, should we go for any health assistance or not? So this is a way for assessment, but when we are going to assess our learners who are staying away from us, we have to take care of all aspects of their living there. And lastly, so this is new, and this is something which is lacking actually. So what we have done, we have arranged five in-house workshops for our faculties and teachers here, so that they can use this uh, technological aspect and that we can keep teaching and learning activities going on at the same time assessment in the right track. So, and then we have uh, assessment strategies, uh, if it is not visible there. So we have assessment strategies and their first one is actually covering most of the learning contents. So it is not about um, at the end, the assessment or test or exam, 
uh, our focus was to, in our assessment, we have to ensure the learning outcomes are met. So that's why we haven't even fixed our schedule. We haven't a particular, we haven't fixed any particular days or dates when there'll be exam. The teachers are at, at the switch wheel, according to their company and time, they can set the tests on Edmodo using those options. So encouraging learners in self-directed learning. So actually, as we set the test or tasks, so students have their option. We'll give, we give, usually give time to the learners for the quizzes and for assignments more time so that they can study, they can cover up and they can submit. So there is almost a self-directed mechanism is uh, provided to them. And then facilitating a continuous and formative assessment. So this is a very, uh, uh, it's, uh, very important and already Mojul uh, Sahi told about formative assessment. So we are also having continuous assessment so that uh, the students, the cadets, you know, attendance is a big problem and availability of technological uh, equipment or devices, this is also a problem. But another problem is that as they're away, uh, some of the learners or students may think I will not attend to these classes or this exam. So it should not be. So learning and test will be going together so that the material or the external benefit, learners, they need some grades. So this is the context of a country. So we have to attract them and make their classes significant, giving this message that your learning will be tested. So keep learning. So this is one point. And then assessing learners' cognitive and analytical skills. As I told about the MCQs and quizzes, it will be going for the cognitive part. And for the assignments, we have these analytical skills to develop. And then adding credibility to learners' active participation. We have also graded. This is something uh, that is unique in that way. And we felt that utility and also importance of it, that attendance should have some uh, grading. So, each day, if a learner is present in all classes or most classes, he will gain one point. And these every day's points and grades will be actually accumulated at the end of the term or the semester or particular month. So this is something that again, that will uh, motivate the learners to be there in the classes. Developmental feedback to learners' performances. So this is, uh, Manjur Abhinasar already told that formative feedback so we can call it as developmental or we can call it constructive feedback and the assignments it has on Edmodo, it has that option to give individual feedback in detail, not any, uh, what it is called, not a very framed work, uh, a framed feedback or common feedback to all, rather individually we can assess the learner's performance and we can also give them the feedback so that they can improve. Keeping learner's portfolio, uh, it is very good to know that uh, Edmodo will keep all the records there, including the uh, learner's works. So that can help you at the end if you want to give any sort of general uh, feedback or assessment or progress report, we can check out those portfolios. And lastly, that is uh, formulating an alternative uh, to high stake exam. So what you have done as continuous exams and tests are going on, assignments are going on, all we the gradings or points is stored there on Edmund. But at the same time, we are not taking all of their performances according to the instructions of our national curriculum. What we have done, we picked best of three. That means each students or cadets, best of three performance for each paper. So it gives the empathic, that is empathetic. That means we have to be empathetic and this empathy should reach them. That we are not keeping you under pressure, that you have that option, you can miss some exams, but you keep learning and developing and you, your uh, performance will be acknowledged. And this is statistics, though this is very much uh, our own, but what I need to point here, so the quizzes and assignments, if you can see the number of classes and the subjects, it means some uh, classes they have other groups and look at the total test, average test for a class and the class attendance. So if the learners are attending the classes, the option, the opportunity for learn, learning more is there. So we can also have that in you know, your grading. So it, that should be you know, some uh, positive feedback to the learners that learn and grow, and they should not uh, be you know, disturbed with any sort of fear or anxiety that I will lose grade or I will have failure. So we have encouraged them with our system. And as this particular ADDA is basing on the challenges of uh, online assessment, 
So this is one ensuring credibility in assessment or that is uh, reliability of the assessment. So because online the students, the learners are free and how they are maintaining their dignity in submitting their tasks, whether they are going for any plagiarism, any copying. Yes, they can learn from other sources, but they have to digest it and then have to re reproduce it. So then confirming practicality in assessment, internet problem, electricity problem. So, and there's some financial problems all are there, but we have to ensure that it is accessible to most of our learners or we are giving them that much time so they can respond in a proper way. Domination of knowledge-based tests. This is traditionally, we are actually uh, dominated by knowledge-based tests. We have to uh, change this pattern and this kind of uh, what attitude that we are, pri that are prevailing among us. We have to go going for uh, developmental formative feedback. Incorporating relevant study and online research. So if the internet is available, this is huge world open to the learners. So any content, any learning material given to them, and they have the additional internet. So the whole world is open to them. So we have to incorporate this relevant study and online research in our assessment. And effective means of assessing learners is skill. So already our evidence are told that we have to you know, poster portfolio, even mutual peer assessment. So all these things can be uh, used there but these are challenges actually for our country in our context, blending alternative assessment with traditional ones. We cannot reject the traditional ones. It would be there, the summative exams would be there, but we have to also incorporate that alternative assessment and the possibilities that we have. So it's good for- uh, Sorry, you have just the last two minutes time to finish. Eh? Uh, sir, it will be very good, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, scope for self-directed assessment for learning. So it, it, there is a possibility and we can use the you know, device, the technologies to uh, activate this particular one self-directed assessment, as I have already mentioned at Moodle, varieties of online assessment tools. And there are many, even in our country, some uh, uh, lab or farm, they're coming up with materials, with apps, so that uh, the learners can be assessed properly or even online teaching is possible. And then there is also creating online forum for analytical assessment. So that is, uh, you know, the forum learning, the blog, it can be also used. And again, uh, whatever platform you're following, the Edmodo, it can also give you that option. So again, allowing peer and mutual assessment, creating research-based learning opportunities, and developing digital skills and literacy. This is one of the core skills, as we know. So obviously it will also develop scope for auditory and visual assessment. It is not only a pen and pencil, it is not only writing. It can be also one-to-one -one interview. It can be also some sort of poster. It can be also some sort of painting, drawing, any sort of. So these are the possibilities that you have because we have online education and we can shape our assessment, online assessment according you. So that's all uh, from me. So thank you very much. Your question, please. So, uh... The questions are there, but most of the questions are related to the reliability and validity of online tests. Um, I'm requesting you to think of that. Uh, let, me, uh, let's do, uh, let me welcome yeah, discussion, our, our next hawk of today's discussant. That is Mohammed Imdadul Haq. He's teaching neither in Dhaka nor in Mohammedpur, but a school that is in Biani Bajar Silet that is named as uh, Dhaka Uttar Mohammedpur School. So please. Um, take your um, uh, floor for five minutes only. Thank you very much. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Mohammed Indul Hagbulchi. I'm actually to uh, differently. I mean, start Kurti Tatsi because uh, today's topic is about assessment uh, during COVID-19 uh, challenges and possibilities. So before going to start my session, I, uh, or before going to start my, uh, what I want to say, uh, I would like to start with myself actually, self-assessment. So uh, COVID-19 ashar age, January take into Amra school a assembly te bole chhe je keo mobile use korte parbe na, mobile judi paad jay ta hole bhenge phala habe. So that was the reality. And then uh, COVID-19, when we came to the show, we were able to get the show on the online-based. So we had to start the Zoom, but we had to start the Zoom. We had to start the Zoom, and we had to start the Zoom. 
জুম দিয়ে কোন ক্লাস করলে হয়তো দেখা যাবে আমার সব ইনফরমেশন চলে যাবে এই ধরনের বিভিন্ন কথাবার্তা ছিল বাট আমি চার মাস পাঁচ মাস হয়ে যাচ্ছে আমি জুমের সাথে আছি আমার কিছুই যায়নি আসলে অনেক কিছু পেয়েছি আমি বাট দ্য গুড থিং আর পসিবিলিটিস যেগুলো সেগুলো সম্পর্কে আমি বলবো যে আমি নিজে অনেক কিছু শিখেছি আমি এখন চারটি প্ল্যাটফর্মে কাজ করছি চারটি প্ল্যাটফর্ম বলতে জুমে আমি একটা টিচার ট্রেনিং করছি এটি আওয়ার্সের এখানে আমি ট্রেনিং দিচ্ছি ফ্যাসিলিটেট করছি অ্যান্ড তাছাড়া আমার কিছু ক্লাস আছে একটা ডিভিশনাল অনলাইন যে স্কুল আছে আমাদের সেখানে আমি রেকর্ড করে দিচ্ছি আমার ক্লাস অ্যান্ড দেন স্টুডেন্টস গিভ ফিডব্যাক আর হোম টাস্ক অ্যাসাইনমেন্ট এগুলো দিচ্ছি আমাকে হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ গ্রুপে অ্যান্ড দেন আই চেক দ্যাট দেয়ার অ্যাক্টিভিটিস এবং আমি চেষ্টা করি যে তাদেরকে ফিডব্যাকটা এইভাবে যেটা মঞ্জুরুল স্যারের কাছ থেকে শুনলাম সেভাবেই আসলে আমি চেষ্টা করি যে তাদেরকে সরাসরি কালেকশন করে না দিয়ে তাদেরকে প্রথমে মার্ক করে দিই কালেকশন কোড ইউজ করি এবং তারা এটা নিয়ে আমার সাথে থাকে সেখানেই শেষ না এটা নিয়ে আবার তারা বসে যে স্যার এখানে কেন হলো কি না আমি বলি যে তোমরা ডিসকাশন করো বন্ধুদের সাথে এবং বের করো যে কোথায় সমস্যাটা এটা হলো একটা আর একটা ক্লাস আমি করছি যেখানে আমি মনে করি যে অ্যাসেসমেন্টটা আমার জন্য খুব ভালো হচ্ছে আমি ভালোভাবে অ্যাসেস করতে পারছি সেটা হচ্ছে আমি টেনমেন্টি স্কুলে লাইভ কিছু ক্লাস নিচ্ছে যেখানে আমার স্টুডেন্ট সংখ্যা অনেক বেশি থাকছে সেখানে আমার দেখা যাচ্ছে একসাথে ক্লাস করছে মানে সর্বনিম্ন দুশো জন আছেন এবং সর্বোচ্চ আমি পাঁচশো সাতাশি পর্যন্ত স্টুডেন্ট পেয়েছি ফ্রম অল ওভার দিস কান্ট্রি সো এখানে যেটা হয় যে এটাতে আমার সুবিধা হচ্ছে যে তারা আমাকে ইনস্ট্যান্টলি সো ইন্টারাকশনটা খুব ভালো হয় তারা ইনস্ট্যান্টলি আমাকে প্রশ্ন করতে পারে এবং আমি সেই প্রশ্ন অনুযায়ী তাদেরকে সলিউশন দিয়ে থাকে এবং তারপর তাদেরকে আমি হোম টাচ দিয়ে দিই এবং অ্যাসাইনমেন্ট দিয়ে দিই যে জিনিসটা হচ্ছে মানে আমি যেটা বলতে চাচ্ছি সেটা হচ্ছে যে আমি এগুলোতে আসলাম আমার পেছনে উদ্দেশ্যটা ছিল কিন্তু আসলে স্টুডেন্টদেরকে এঙ্গেজ করা এই জন্য আমি তাদেরকে বলে দিয়েছি যে আমি তোমাদেরকে অ্যাসেস করবো বাট অ্যাসেসের অ্যাসেসমেন্ট রুব্রিক্সটা থাকবে একটু ডিফারেন্ট আমার কাছে ইম্পর্টেন্স পাবে হচ্ছে তুমি কতটুকু রেসপন্সিবল আমার কাছে ইম্পর্টেন্স পাবে হচ্ছে তুমি কতটুকু রেসপন্সিভ অর্থাৎ আমি যখন তোমাকে কোনো টাচ দিচ্ছি সেটা কত তাড়াতাড়ি তুমি দ্রুততার সাথে আমাকে দিচ্ছ সেটাতে মার্ক আছে সেটাতে আমার ক্রেডিট দেওয়া আছে এবং তুমি আমার কাজগুলো কিভাবে করছো এবং আমি তাদেরকে কাজগুলো এমন ভাবে দিতে চাচ্ছি বা টাচগুলো এমন ভাবে দিই অর্থাৎ আমি প্রেজেন্ট সিম্পল যদি তাকে শেখাই আমি তাকে বলি যে তোমার ফ্যামিলিতে তুমি রোজ কি করো এখন এই সিচুয়েশন নিয়ে সেটা আমাকে রাইট ফিউ সেন্টেন্সেস অ্যান্ড গিভ ইট টু মি সো তারপর যখন আমি তাকে পাস সিম্পল শেখাচ্ছি তখন আমি বলতেছি গত সপ্তাহে তুমি তোমার ফ্যামিলিতে বা তোমার সারাউন্ডিংস তোমার কি হয়েছিল জাস্ট গিভ ইট টু মি সো এটা দেওয়ার পর আমি তাদেরকে যেটা করি অ্যাসেসমেন্টের ব্যাপারটা হচ্ছে আমি তাদেরকে একটা সুবিধা হচ্ছে অনলাইন অ্যাসেসমেন্টে যেটা পসিবিলিটি হিসেবে আমি বলবো সময় মাত্র পাঁচ মিনিট এর জন্য আমি খুব স্পিডে কথা বলে যাচ্ছি অনেক কিছু হয়তো বলবো আমি পরে মানে সেটা হচ্ছে আমি খুব স্পিডে কথা বলে যাচ্ছি সেটা হচ্ছে আমি যেটা করি তাদেরকে ফেস টু ফেস টিচিংয়ে যেটা করতাম সেটা হচ্ছে তাদেরকে হয়তো চকলেট দিলাম যে ভালো করলো অথবা তাদেরকে হয়তো স্টিকার দিলাম বাট এখানে অনলাইনে এসে আমার সুবিধা হচ্ছে সো আমি এই ক্যাটাগরি রুব্রিক্সে যারা টপ করছে যারা সুন্দরভাবে এই জিনিসগুলো দিচ্ছে এবং যখন সে তার ফ্যামিলি নিয়ে কথা বলবে তখন তার কিন্তু আর মানে এখানে প্লেজারিজমের কোনো সুযোগ থাকবে না সেটা তার ফ্যামিলি নিয়ে কথা বলতে হবে তার সুতরাং এখানে সেটা যা বলতেছে সে সে তার কথাই বলতেছে থাক ভুল বাট সে তারটুকুই আমাকে দিচ্ছে সো তারপর যখন আমি বেস্ট স্টুডেন্টগুলোকে আমি বাছাই করি তাদেরকে আমি যে জিনিসটা করি তাদেরকে গ্রুপের মাঝে আমি বই দিয়ে দিই পিডিএফ বই আছে কিছুদিন আগে আমি একটা বই দিয়েছি সত্যজিৎ রায়ের একশো এক গল্প সো এটা সেভেন মানে সাতশো সাতাত্তর পৃষ্ঠার একটা বই এটা আসলে ফেস টু ফেস লাইফে এরকম বই স্টুডেন্টদেরকে গিফট করা ইট ওয়াজ টু ডিফিকাল্ট বাট এই কোভিড নাইনটিন আমাদেরকে এটাকে ইজি করে দিয়েছে বা আমি ম্যাটেরিয়াল দিতে পারছি খুব সহজে আমি সাপোর্ট দিতে পারছি আমার স্টুডেন্টকে খুব সহজে আর পজিটিভ দিক আরেকটা জিনিস যেটা দেখছি যে ফেস টু ফেস লাইফে কিন্তু আমি আমার কলিগদের সহযোগিতা যতটুকু পেয়েছি এই অনলাইনে এসে আমি কলিগদের সহযোগিতা অনেক বেশি পাচ্ছি অর্থাৎ আমার গতকালকে যে ঘটনা হয়েছিল গতকালকে একটা ট্রেনিং ছিল সো আমার কলিগের ইন্টারনেট স্পিড ভালো না আমার এখানকে স্পিডটা ভালো আমি বললাম যে ওকে আই বি দ্য হোস্ট আমি হোস্ট হচ্ছে এবং তারপর হোস্টে আমি স্টার্ট করে আমি তোমাকে হোস্ট বানিয়ে দিচ্ছি তুমি যেহেতু কন্ট্যাক্ট করছো এবং আমি আছি সো এই যে কলাবোরেশনটা এই শেয়ারিং থেকে কিন্তু আগে ছিল শেয়ারিং এর ব্যাপার এখন
আরেকটা পজিটিভ দিক আমি যেটা বলছি সেটা হচ্ছে আমরা আসলে স্টুডেন্টদেরকে খুব হয়তো বা ভুল ধারণা করতাম যে তারা হয়তো টেকনোলজিতে এক্সপার্ট না বা কিছুতে না কিন্তু বিশ্বাস করবেন আমার বিশ্বাস হয়নি আসলে যে তারা পাওয়ার পয়েন্ট ইউজ করে কিন্তু আমাকে প্রজেক্ট এনে দিচ্ছে তারা দে ক্যান ইউজ পাওয়ার পয়েন্ট তারা তাদের প্রজেক্টগুলো দে প্রজেক্ট দিচ্ছে তারা খুব সুন্দর করে পাওয়ার পয়েন্ট ইউজ করে তারা খুব সুন্দর করে আমাকে এনে দিচ্ছে সো দে ক্যান ডু দিস বিকজ দে আর ফ্রম জেড জেনারেশন আমি বিশ্বাস করি যে তাদের এই জেড জেনারেশনের যেহেতু তারা তাদের এই কোয়ালিটি থাকবেই যে তারা এই অনলাইন বেসড বা টেকনোলজি বেসড জিনিস পারবে এখন হচ্ছে আমাদের চ্যালেঞ্জেসটা হচ্ছে তাদেরকে এঙ্গেজ রাখা এটাই আমি মনে করি সবচেয়ে বড় চ্যালেঞ্জেস এবং তাদেরকে কিভাবে আমি সম্পৃক্ত রাখতে পারবো আমার সাথে বিকজ তারাও ট্রমার ভিতর দিয়ে যাচ্ছে সাইকোলজিক্যাল স্ট্রেস তাদেরও আছে তাদেরও পাশের বাড়ি লকডাউন হয়ে আছে হয়তো তাদেরই হয়তো আত্মীয় কেউ হসপিটালাইজ আছে সো এই জায়গাতে আমি অ্যাজ এ টিচার যেহেতু আমি একজন কাউন্সিলর আমি যেন তাকে সেই সাপোর্টিভ অবস্থানে থাকতে পারি সেভাবেই চেষ্টা করছি আর অ্যাসেসমেন্টের ব্যাপারে আমি মানে তার অনেক ভালো পড়াশোনা করতে হবে সেটা থেকে আমি বনে করি আমি প্রায়োরিটি দিচ্ছি যে তার আমার সাথে কানেক্টেড থাকতে হবে এবং তার কথা তার দুঃখ তার সমস্যা তার জিনিসগুলো যেন আমি বুঝতে পারি আমি তাকে যেন সাপোর্ট দিতে পারি ইন অল দ্য ওয়েজ যতটুকু আমার দ্বারা সম্ভব সেই সাপোর্টটুকু দিতে যেন পারি আমি সেদিকেই আসলে গুরুত্ব দিয়ে আমি কাজ করে যাচ্ছি এবং আমি আমার কলিগদের সাপোর্ট পাচ্ছি সবার সাপোর্ট পাচ্ছি স্যাররা আছেন সবসময় স্যারদেরকে অনুসরণ করছি ওনারা কিভাবে ক্লাস নেন আমি প্রত্যেকটা ক্লাসে ঢু মারছি অনলাইন ক্লাসে দেখছি যে কিভাবে হচ্ছে ক্লাস সেখান থেকে আমি শিখছি অ্যাসেসমেন্ট স্টাইলটাও শিখছি আর আজকে তো এই কিনোর স্পিকার মঞ্জুর ভাইয়ের মঞ্জুর স্যারের কাছ থেকে আমি অনেক কিছু লিখে নিয়েছি সো আই উইল ট্রাই টু ফলো ইট থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ আমার মনে হয় আমি সময়ের ভিতরে শেষ করেছি থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ টেকিং দি ওয়ার্ল্ড কানেক্টিং উইথ দি স্টুডেন্ট দি ওয়ার্ল্ড কানেক্টিং फ्रॉम यू আই উড লাইক টু ওয়েলকাম মিস এস এন তাহমিনা She is the assistant head teacher of GK Model High School in Gajipur. She's also involved uh, with, with connecting classroom uh, and she's the A2I ambassador. Thank you very much. In the end of the room, you maintain the time. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Apu. Uh, as the time is short, I would like to directly start my talk. Uh, actually, connecting classroom and now the situation online class uh, in somewhere they are the uh, same to conduct class or do the project okay oh when covid 19 spread all over the world school abruptly closed almost globally and uh, all over the world the school thing how to conduct the class how to keep connect students and continue studies and like on a, all other countries bangladesh also uh, like to do this but it is not easy for bangladesh and it is really full of troublesome for us actually i would like to share from my experience i've started an online school uh, in my schools uh, like a facebook page facebook group and also google classroom i try parents to phone messages facebook post and etc but till we are trying because we have not been able to reach all students till now when we upload or uh, post a class or live a class and uh, through a question how many views or comments come it is clear to us uh, that uh, how many students uh, reach the class or not and very unfortunately the successful percentage is not good uh, and this is not the scenario of my school it is the scenario all over my gajipur or all over my bangladesh and i would like to mention here some challenges like very few teacher in our country are skilled in digital literacy and the same condition about our students parents or guardian especially usually we do not allow high school students to use social media even we keep away them from mobile but what the scenario uh, at this moment this digital device is the main vehicle for e learning or uh, online schools so our main problem is to reach our classes to our students and then we do not have the infrastructure to take 
or provide this service at all level like primary or secondary uh, and among them uh, slow internet high prices poor coverage financial inability to buy smartphone or computer tech. even there is a percentage of where there is no television yet actually our assessment system is not also fit for online assessment but if we go back to our connecting classroom project or connecting classroom activities those school who are involved with this project or uh, those school who are uh, active the international school work they are easily conduct this kind of class or easily find out the opportunities uh, from everywhere like bangladesh like all other countries uh, this is actually uh, happened because uh, the school who are engaged in British Council, they had to make partnership with other countries, other countries' school, uh, and they had to communicate with other uh, countries' teachers, students. Uh, uh, maybe it uh, would be Skype session or email or Facebook or WhatsApp. So it is more easier for them to uh, conduct online classes uh, but not uh, it's not for all uh, even it is not uh, possible or it is not benefited for us uh, but uh, like our Mdadul Hak sir I would also like to mention uh, my or uh, like other teachers uh, some of my possibilities or good luck which brings COVID-19. Actually, uh, here I uh, think COVID-19 works as a catalyst, as a blessing with the being a cost of education because uh, due to emergency of the pandemic, we learn how to adapt pandemic, how to be healed, how to survive. Teacher students have learned effective use of ICT like all other teachers. Uh, actually, I am not also uh, used to online classes. Uh, I have conducted a different project, but this is not online classes or live classes, recorded classes using different software or better sound or videos. Uh, so uh, everything is new for me, uh, like all other uh, teachers. Uh, now we also use Padlet, OVS, Facebook Room, Google Meet, Google Classroom, etc. So uh, these all are missing for me like all other uh, teachers and here i also mention the benefit and interrelation with connecting classroom and our curriculum or our uh, related project uh, school connecting classroom schools online registration kore den uh, they have to get a new platform where they have get the all the schools mainly uh, mainly uk and all other uh, make minimum 54 countries teacher are there abong tara jeta kore seta hocche je okhane amra jemon facebook e posti je ami kimba facebook e amra request pathai je amra apnar sathe bondhutto korte chai okhane amader jeta kaj hoy project based Jeta Kora Hai, Shetahochi, a Bibino teacher, their Bibino project here, Upper Base for it, post the Jaman Amon Holo, Jami, civil obligation or project project for the Jai, Tarpur Amon Holo, and water treatment or project for the Jai, who wants to do that? The Erokum Jokon Kaha Molahai, Jokon Dakaja, Puru Bisho Teki, Jara Ekanaki school, Jacan Teka, I platform Achi teacher. তার দেখা যায় যে এখানে যারা যারা এগ্রি করে একত্রে একটা প্ল্যাটফর্ম তৈরি হয় এমন হয় যে একটা কাজের জন্য 30টা 40টা দেশ এগ্রি করে ফেললে যে আমরা এই কাজটা করব এতে করে যেটা সুবিধা হয় সেটা হচ্ছে যে আমার দেশের ছেলে মেয়েরা ঠিক এই জায়গাটাই বসেই তারা গ্লোবালাইজেশনের স্বাদ পাচ্ছে তারা ইজিলি গ্লোবাল হয়ে যাচ্ছে এটা কেমন করে যে যখন তারা একটা প্রজেক্টে ইন করে তখন আমাদেরকে যেটা করতে হয় সেটা হচ্ছে আমার দেশে এই প্রজেক্টের কিছু এমস এন্ড অবজেকটিভ সেট করার পর আমাদেরকে শেয়ার করতে হয় যে এটার এমস কি অবজেকটিভ কি আমার লার্নিং আউটকাম কি হবে 
দেন এটা আমার যে কোটা দেশের সাথে আমি প্রজেক্টটা করব প্রত্যেককেই আবার এগ্রি করবে দেন আমরা এটা করি তো যেটা হয় সেটা হচ্ছে যে আমার দেশে আমি এক রকম করে করছি আরেক দেশে আরেক রকম করছে বাট আমাদের লার্নিং আউটকামটা আমরা অলমোস্ট একটা জায়গায় যে সেট করতে চাই যে আমরা আসলে কিভাবে শিখেছি এবং কি শিখেছি এবং যখন শেয়ারিংটা হয় আসলে এটা শেয়ারিং না কোলাবোরেশনটা যখন হয় তখন দেখা যায় যে এটা আসলে খুবই খুবই একটা রিচ কোন একটা কিছু দাঁড় দাঁড় যায় এটা কারণ হচ্ছে যে এখানে আমারটা এক পাশে থাকে দেন আমি এটার সাথে অ্যাড করতে পারি মিনিমাম বিশটা কান্ট্রি কিংবা ধরেন আমি একটা কান্ট্রি অ্যাড করতে পারলাম তখন দেখা যায় যে এটা আমার জন্য মানে অটো রান করার মতো হয়ে যায় টু বি গ্লোবাল সো দিস ইজ এ ভেরি রিচ প্ল্যাটফর্ম আই থিঙ্ক ফর কোয়ালিটি অ্যান্ড টু এনশিওর কোয়ালিটি অ্যান্ড এডুকেশন এবং আমি মনে করি যে আসলে এটাতে ইন করা আমাদের স্কুলগুলোর জন্য খুবই জরুরি ইফ দ্য স্কুল ওয়ান্স টু বি গ্লোবাল অর ইফ দ্য স্কুল ওয়ান্স টু এনশিওর দ্য কোয়ালিটি এডুকেশন ওকে থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ তামিনা it's really great to know that uh, even in school so many innovations are taking place we wouldn't be able to know if you were not here so that is the beauty of this academic adda we want the practitioners to be here and we want to hear from you what you're doing so thank you now amader ashole ei academic adda ta joto ruku howar kotha je tar che onek lomba hoye geche ebong amra audience ke floor dite cheyechhilam so what i'll be doing is i'll just uh, I'll just take a brief comment uh, on online assessment in public universities and also from my experience and advice in private universities. Amra mon hoy shobai jani overnight amra online assessment e chole gelam starting from 17th March. Uh, private university uh, very quickly uh, decide kore online e chole gelo. Uh, we know the uh, issues why uh, private universities could take such a quick decision. আমার মঞ্জুর আবেদিনের কথা থেকে যেটা বোঝা গেল হুইচ ইজ ফ্যান্টাস্টিক যে দে নেভার মিস এ সিঙ্গেল ক্লাস ইভেন ওয়েন দে শিফট টু অনলাইন স্মোর আমাদের পাবলিক ইউনিভার্সিটির ন্যাচারালি কিছু লিমিটেশন আছে যে কারণে আমরা সাথে সাথে কিন্তু অনলাইনের ব্যাপারে সিদ্ধান্ত নিতে পারি অ্যান্ড দেন দেয়ার আর একাডেমিক ফ্লেক্সিবিলিটি দ্যাট উই এনজয় উইদ ইন পাবলিক ইউনিভার্সিটিস অ্যান্ড উই আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দ্যাট আমাদের যদি কিছু সময় কিছুটা যদি ল্যাবসও হয়ে যায় we are confident je ei time ta amra hoyto cover up korte parbo problem ta hocche jokhon eta indefinite time hoye jay tokhon dhaka university along with other public universities they decide to go for online and i am talking about uh, online um, classes at public university at this moment um, when we decided uh, it has been like uh, less than a month we started and uh, i guess uh, the response is quite good আমাদের আমাদের পাবলিক সাথে যদি আমরা কম্পেয়ার করি খুব ভালোভাবে কম্পেয়ার করে যাবে ফর এক্সাম্পল ইফ ইউ ইফ আই টক অ্যাবাউট ফ্রম মাই এক্সপিরিয়েন্স উইথ মাই স্টুডেন্ট মাস্টার্স লেভেল আই 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 রিমেম্বার মেনি অফ দ্যাম ইজ স্টিল হ্যাভিং দি অ্যানালগ ফোনস which will which doesn't have the all uh, support system of the smartphones let alone we are talking about laptop desktop and others another difficulty is such a overnight decision so what happened many of them are living outside dhaka without uh, proper internet connectivity and also without uh, proper equipments so ei ei jaga gulo te jehetu khub concrete kono decision amra shurur dike nite parini ta je public university online ta ektu deri hoyeche ekhono আমরা খুব ইনক্লুসিভ করতে পারি বলে মনে হয় চিন্তা ভাবনা সেভাবে শুরু করেনি বাট ইফ ইউ টক অ্যাবাউট ফর্মেটিভেন যেটা মঞ্জুর আবেদিন নিউ টেস্ট একটা লিস্ট দিয়েছে আই উজ লুকিং হ্যাপি টু লুক অ্যাট portfolio writing reflective journals case study coursework at the institute of modern language we have been doing it quite quite a long time in fact amader master ni elt te a portfolio writing reflective essays amader ever since we started the master program almost 20 years cholche we have case studies we have reflective journals uh, 
when we are talking about formative assessment at, at the Institute of Modern Language, we have 40 and 60. 40% of the formative assessment is 60%. I think you know the mechanism that work at uh, public universities. And our exam system and everything is a kind of an act which has been approved. I am the particular academic council that approved for. I am the modality among a sitting exam age issues. Gulo ase, cheta amon bhavi nirdharon kora ase, and then different platform ase. Kaje, I am the rest of the committee assessment je paper shombo to amra kono major decision ei mood kena shombo hobe bolle mone hoy na. But about the formative assessment, yes. Uh, I, uh, I have already assigned uh, uh, number of reflex essays to undergrad students. We can have undergrad one students. They are already on a project based uh, So, some of the assessment to paper, Amar Monhoi, is possible in public universities, uh, formative assessment, uh, but some of the assessment to paper, public university, a move to ship them to not to difficulties that say, Amade, which I would write Monirakta Habe, the public university, which are rigid rules such about. Uh, summary assessment. I think some of you know it. There is a first examiner, there is a second examiner. Um, the question will at a moderation of the board at the exam committee at the shed. It's okay overnight from both to change for the But of course, when you talk about possibilities, it's wonderful that uh, a crisis time of the cable to act a reflection of Shujuk. So we, we might think about it. I'm sure the public university, uh, Jugupu Jugi have updated uh, for a couple of difficulties in the four bill. Now, due uh, to issues in the actor, uh, Monsur Abidin already, I think, talked about it. Amra, the training, the assessment, we know about it. There is a shift from assessment of learning to assessment for learning. Amra, assessment for learning, we have shift for the classroom based assessment, which we have been doing for a long time. Tamina Jita Bolsila about connecting classroom. Sheta Kinta Ekhoronir, Amra, assessment for learning in the switch for us. Abong Shethoronir assessment, I would say, Amar Mone Omni after that. Uh, of course, uh, talked about how we could mix both. Uh, from the assessment, take the last answer. Maybe there is we can think about both formative and my experience with private university. Jekane, I as an advisor, I mean, part time share for it. Even at a private university, I mean, teaching practicum, hands on the course, I said, in online assessment course, like the 100%. Even a course like research methodology, I didn't find it really difficult. So in a private university, the uh, the flexibility they enjoy, changes But again, question remains about the reliability and validity of the assessment that we are doing at the private university at this moment. Current overnight switch which is suddenly have decided under the university grant commission. You talked about most of the private universities, remember. They shifted to assignment based uh, assessment. So, student, I, I guess this is a um, kind of a compromise formula that we are trying at private university at this moment because there are limitations in private universities. You need to finish the academic calendar and then you start a new semester and you don't get the tuition fees from the students. You, you face a lot of difficulties in the financial and the COVID 19. Because of the COVID 19, I'm sure financially. The middle rack universities are seriously hampered. Abong, I mean, Madhya Pradesh, Monipur, or Kichu university will shut down. Who is our possibility? Because uh, sixty percent student dropout. Who is that? So many universities. So forty percent student their tuition fee. Their private institution sustainability issues. Who is that? So they are switching to online assessment. Kind of forced to. Public university, we don't have serious issues. You know that financially, we we can still wait for some couple of months. But of course, by September, I'm sure the Dhaka University also will come up with. Uh, the online assessment about uh, formal assessment to paper also should the part but some of the assessment to paper it too difficult to raise because it a quick, quick decision never should you publish the night because we have number of acts and other you know about 70 uh, other day public university act that's it the chapter university governed why I'm other different academic bodies as a job in the way she done the blow high within that I can also tell you that I'm other public Dhaka university academic flexibility of Monsoor of can uh, really Bear with me. The Amra Aksham way class test chilo 25 marks, 75 chilo course. Amra Jokon Prothom IML teaching should with 100 percent was summative assessment. Should act a polycoto the four hours. She can take 25. At this moment, at the Institute of Modern Language, we have 40 and 60. I'm at least 40 percent formative assessment to make. I'm sure in future it a case switch college of even COVID Agi Amrak in the Erosan Chindana. So I guess. Public and uh, private sector compared to picture. I mean, they are just a column from my experience with both 
এবং আমার মনে হচ্ছে দের আর লট অফ পসিবিলিটি এবং কোভিডে আমাদের এই লাইক রাবিয়া যেখানে কাজ করে ডেফো দিল আনাদার ইউনিভার্সিটি ব্লেজার লার্নিং এর ব্যাপারে খুবই গুরুত্ব দিয়েছে আমার মনে হয় পাবলিক ইউনিভার্সিটি উইল স্টার্ট থিংকিং अबाउट ইট রিমেম্বার যখন পলিটিক্যাল আনরেস্ট হয় আমরা প্রায় 3 মাস 3 মান্থস কোন ক্লাস করতে পারি নাই ডেফো দিল কিন্তু তখন ক্লাস করে গেছে সো এই যে প্রাইভেট ইউনিভার্সিটি যে যাদের অপশন গুলোকে ওয়ার্ক আউট করতে পারে পাবলিক ইউনিভার্সিটি করতে পারে এখন কিন্তু পাবলিক ইউনিভার্সিটি এই জুম এন্ড অনলাইন প্ল্যাটফর্মে চলে যাচ্ছে সো যদি কখনো আমাদের বাংলাদেশে উই আর প্রন টু ন্যাচারাল ডিজাস্টার আছে আমাদের পলিটিক্যাল ডিজাস্টার আছে ফর এ লং টার্ম আমাদের ক্লাস সাসপেনশন হয়ে থাকে এখন সম্ভবত পাবলিক ইউনিভার্সিটি এই জিনিসগুলো থেকে ভেরি ইজিলি দে ক্যান সে ওকে নাও ইউ ক্যান স্টার্ট টেকিং অনলাইন ক্লাসেস আচ্ছা এই আমার মনে হয় এই কোভিড 19 এর কারণে আমাদের এই অনলাইন এর যে পসিবিলিটিস আছে হিউজ পসিবিলিটিস এন্ড অফ কোর্স देयर আর নাম্বার অফ চ্যালেঞ্জেস যেটা আমাদেরকে চিন্তা করতে হচ্ছে আমরা ওভারকাম করার চেষ্টা করব थैंक यू রাবিয়া Thank you, sir. We have Hamidan Akhtar with us now. So he will share, uh, I would request you to talk about the challenges um, mostly because uh, as uh, you know, and also I know that uh, we belong to two private universities where there is a kind of an extensive use of online features. We make use of Moodle, you make use of Microsoft Teams and possibly Google Classroom. We were using Google Classroom before COVID. So I would really like to know about the challenges that you have. because we are practicing online classrooms on assessments and everything uh, so what are the challenges come sir over to you thank you rabia can you hear me yes okay sorry for uh, in the interruption uh, okay uh, i think uh, there are several issues uh, some of the issues are very familiar to us a uh, uh, very general issue is that uh, our education system is uh, very much focused on testing Uh, though we are talking about assessment and testing is obviously part of assessment uh, and uh, most of the time alternative assessments are ignored largely ignored so when we talk about covid-19 situation we are forced to actually uh, online classes and also uh, and also the online assessment so first challenge is that our students and our teachers they are very much focused on assessment and they are very much worried about assessment because i can see our teachers uh, talking about assessment procedures methods and they are very much worried how the students are going to think uh, the uh, new tools uh, new assessment tools so i can see they are talking all the time exchanging their uh, ideas and trying new uh, ideas and new methods new tools and they are sharing so but they are definitely worried uh, at the same time i have observed like students writing on uh, social media uh, especially they write a lot about the assessment like uh, we just had the midterm assessment last week and i found my students are writing on the uh, on their facebook and there are uh, several student uh or say portals uh, where they actually share all this and i sometimes i have to follow uh and i can see they are very much worried about these as a new assessment tools they are worried about their grades uh, you know we already know that uh, our education system is assessment or testing focused uh, and less focused on learning uh, in covid related situation you see uh, we talk we are talking about alternative assessment that we cannot go for the traditional assessment tools or the testing tools very good uh so one issue already i mentioned second issue is that these are unexplored areas uh, some of the tools we are trying right now uh, like uh, dr sai talked about assignments yeah we uh, obviously use ass uh, assignments as tools but possibly very cautious possibly with the senior students and the sele in selected course now suddenly we have to try some of the tools untested tools or little tested tools for almost all the students now this is the this is another issue uh, the challenges the student and the teachers face teachers uh, unable to predict the student reactions uh, students in many cases are not familiar with these tools okay then let's move on to this question first which is basically my question as well uh, mahbubur rahman he has asked that when we go for mcq based questions or uh, questions like true false matching mcq students make a group and then they stay together during exam time and they answer what can be done about this who is interested to answer about this one anyone from the pool of discussant or the speaker uh, 
you're interested to answer about this one. Rabia, Hamidur Rahman sir possibly is online now. Okay, then uh, can well, I just sir about the answer? The qu question is. When we have MCQ based questions, students may group, they sit together and they copy, basically they paste the same answer. What can be done about this? So that's, that is the question. Uh, please have your answer ready. Uh, we will now get back to Hamid Rahman sir. Hamid Rahman sir, are you here? Hamid Rahman sir. No. No, sorry, problem. No problem. The okay. technical cliches is there. So, uh, so sir, Hamid, Hamidul Haq ki online is there? Hamidul Haq? Uh, okay, we just let, let's just move on to with the question. Move on with the okay, question. Monzur, Monzur is here to give the answer. Monzur, please unmute yeah. yourself and then if you want to answer about this. That was uh, Monzur, that was about MCQ questions, validity of MCQ. Yeah, I think uh, that's the reason why um, I've mentioned briefly that it's um, we need to proceed with caution uh, if you would like to use MCQs or online quizzes. Um, I think. The best option is to uh, only use the quizzes, the online quizzes or MCQs uh, for um, classroom, classroom based collaborative testing, not individual testing. So which means that you should not use MCQs or online quizzes in order to test individual students and assess them individually. So you shouldn't use them because it's um, I think there is no way you can even if you send the online quiz uh, to one student at a time um, you can't really guarantee that whether you will be you know quickly google search and answer so so there is no way you can there is no anti-cheating method here the only way you can do that is you use it for the student to go through the questions uh, let him or her answer in whatever way he or she can then use that as a platform for an individual discussion later on to find out that whether he has or she has got the concepts right or whether he or she can actually say anything about the concepts on his or her own. In other words, the only alternative is to um, communicate with individual student uh, it, it to find out whether he or she has got it. Sorry to interrupt, but it becomes yeah. difficult when you have a class size of 40, 60, like we have 40 students in a class to yeah. go for a one to one assessment all the time. We do it, but it becomes difficult actually. Okay. Uh, uh, the way I did it is to, uh, is to do a classroom quizzes, let them answer the quizzes in whatever way they can, and then follow up with a homework of a case study where they will have to uh, use the concepts, you know, to analyze the case study. So that's how I did it. That's excellent. Okay, so I hope that answers Ms. Benji Lahi Munni's question as well. She asked the question that why is it being discouraged? This is the reason that MCQ questions, if it is, even if the questions are taken from internet, I mean, you can't do anything about it. Even if we do not take the questions from the internet, we make it ourselves still we find students copying from one another. So uh, as Mondrusa told that we can use them for classroom comprehension in class uh, quizzes, but for the test at the end, we have to think of case study, open book exam or research work, something that can be done uh, and be assessed one-to-one. -one. All right, so next question that we have is from Ms. Nasrin, Nasrin Anjumanduni, Anjum sorry, Nasrin Anjumanduni. She asked how to assess the creative writing papers during the COVID-19. That's the question. Anyone else from the pool of discussions want to answer about this one? So it's about creative writing. Uh, does Tarikul sir or Imdad sir have any uh, answer for this? Do you let your students do that in the class? Uh, okay, can I, can I say something? Please. Uh, okay. So it's so, you can always take that. It's fine. Time taking okay. is... Okay, so uh, when I gave them some creative writing and they, uh, they just uh, write all these uh, writings and uh, upload to my account and then later on I check the, their uh, writings and if there are some uh, areas of errors and I just uh, use correction code, I do not uh, correct them uh, and I give them an opportunity so that they can correct themselves 
and later on they uh, posted again uh, after correcting their uh, mistakes area of, of improvement or mistakes and they uh, said it to be again and then i gave them marks so this is how i i uh, assess them about their uh, creative writings Tarikul sir, do you want to add something? Yes, I can add something uh, to Amdar sir's uh, answer. Thing is that, as I talked about Edmodo, and it has a very good and uh, user-friendly system for assessing this kind of creative writings, such as paragraph essays or personal narrative or descriptive things. So they will send it, and they can send it either by MS Word or by PDF or by image, anything. And then it will come to you that we say Budo, and individually you can go through the write ups and then you can find out the faults. You can write the feedback and directly you can send it to him and it will be preserved. Or else you will go through the creative writings of all the students and generally you may find uh, some of the common mistakes and then you can give also general feedback. Even if the creative writing assignment is not up to the mark, you can resend the assignment, resubmission, you can go for it. So the platform is there. I'm talking about Edmodo. If you can prefer it, it will solve your problem. Thank you very much. So I have just uh, one, you know, uh, challenge to bring to this: is um, how do you, um, how do you um, find out if if the submissions are done by a ghostwriter? <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Should I answer? Because that is a problem. Yeah. Okay. So actually, Edmodo, that means we have to classify the number of uh, cadets or learners. That means that their enrollment is actually restricted. We have to verify and then our class will be closed and there is class code. Without that code, nobody else can get in. Even without their account enrollment, they cannot get in. So they will be actually in the way we can remove him. So no, that, I'm, uh, like, I'm quite You're talking about Edmodo. plagiarism, sir? Uh, no, I mean, let's say that I'm a student. And, and I've got, you know, the question from you to, let's say, write a short story or something like that. <clears throat> but what if I ask my parent to do it for me? <laughs> Even okay. how close there, there is no alternative, uh, but there is one thing in alternative assessment. So if yeah. we can go for it, even copying from internet sources or any other sources, if the student can go through it, this is some sort of input will go inside. So we cannot ensure that 100% learning, but as long as the students are dealing with the materials, learning materials, even if the parents or their friends, they wrote it, if they go through it, the question is known to them. Now the answer will be known to them. So this is some sort yeah. of indirect learning. So may that can I, help them. May I add to Monju sir's challenge that uh, if I want to know if my student, because we sometimes doubt that students haven't written by themselves. They've taken help yeah. from even husband. But what do we do? We can ask questions. Right? What made you write that? Uh, what did you think about? Or how do you think of an alternative to your story? So that makes it clear. And sometimes these students even confess that, Madam, sorry. So that can be done about goose writing. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the solution, I mean, if I just uh, summarize, the solution is to not to just end with one feedback, but to keep the feedback you know, uh, will rolling. Yes. All right. So the next uh, question that we have is about entrance exam. So is there anyone who wanted to say something? If our participants have a good suggestion. What is the exact question, Rabia? No, the, this, this is a different question. Uh, that is from Ms. Imran Islam. She asked about the entrance exam. So what she asked is that, what do you think about the assessment and reliability of the entrance exams at public and private universities using online model of assessment? Do you have any suggestion? So the placement test that we have, uh, that we are having online, I don't, I don't know if we have it in Bangladesh now. Okay. Are we doing online uh, entrance Rabia, uh, I, I just, uh, because you're talking about entrance exam and then when we talk about entry exam, especially we are looking at public universities. Yes, uh, we do have entry exam in some of the private universities, not all the private universities at this moment. Um, I'll comment on that a uh, little bit later. Uh, at this moment, I see uh, my colleague Kamrul Choudhury. Kamrul Hassan Choudhury, are you online at this moment? Kamrul Hassan Choudhury. 
I think, okay. And we also have uh, Dr. Jamil. I'm here, Sajjai. Kamrul, uh, would you like to just comment on our entrance examination, the Dhaka University or the public university? The, the question was about validity of, and the reliability of the entrance of Dhaka University. Or public university, sorry. Public I have it both. Both. Um, I missed the question. Can you please ask again? Okay, uh, let me tell the answer again. So the question was about what do you think about the assessment and reliability of the entrance exams at public and private universities using online model of assessment? Do you have any suggestion for those tests? Mm. I think we are not yet uh, ready for that because you know the university entrance examinations uh, are such a large scale exactly. examinations and, and I'm not quite sure I know that um, Notre Dame College is going online this time for their uh, for entry to that college but for public universities I'm, I'm still not sure if, if we can have a reliable uh, examination uh, following the virtual mode. Uh, I have a feeling that we are not yet uh, quite ready for that. Okay, uh, I think uh, Rabia, the question when I was looking at, first thing is uh, uh, forget about online mode. We can even talk about interest examination, the existing admission system of public university. That can be one question of thing. Because online, online uh, I don't think that uh, in the public universities will ever switch to an online entrance system. Not possible at this moment because at the challenges that I already mentioned in a public university, any decision you want to uh, about examination, admission, it is, goes through different bodies, you know, and the process is quite rigorous. And then there are a lot of issues. Think about uh, in the national examination, you know, all over Bangladesh, you know, if you talk about Dhaka University, how many centers are there? and how to manage all these things. And then you need base exam, exam system. And you also, we also talk about one umbrella system in all public university, which four of the uh, public university, we didn't really agree to that. You know that Shahjal University and others are going for one test in a kind of medical examination system. And then the next question is about, if you're switching this entire, the entrance examination, on online mode, which is quite difficult. I, I don't think that it will be a remote possibilities that there. I don't know. But we can also talk about the validity of the existing admission system, the unit, because it's an MCQ. Sorry, Rabia. I think just- No, no, it's fine. I was just adding that because we are already having challenges with the public um, uh, setting. So schools are not, we have schools closed. Uh, public universities just started running recently, if I'm not wrong, uh, in online, through online classes. Right. And Hamidul so is here. On entrance exam. No, Rabia, you can talk about entry examination in the private university. Do you have an entry examination at private for the last couple of semesters during COVID? Did you have something, an admission test? Yes, Hamidul sir. Ham we have Hamidul sir in here. Hamidul Rahman sir. Sir, actually the audio... Sir, he's not being able to okay. unmute himself. Can someone help, help him unmute? Do we, do we have Hamidul Hawk? No, we don't. Uh, Hamidul, sir, he will be no. able to talk about the online entrance exam that we had in Daffodil. Do, do, do you have online admission test? I no. need to ask Hamid, sir. He's the best person to answer about this. Okay. Hamidul Rahman, sir. No, sir. It's okay, sir, I'm muted. Fine. Let's, okay. let's switch to the next question then. Okay. Uh, so the next question that we have is from Ms. Tasneem Akhtar. She talked up, I want to uh, uh, answer partially about this question. She talked about the validity and reliability of video-based presentation, which I do not see any problem with because uh, I have uh, one research paper which is complete. Uh, based on my students' Facebook Live presentations. So uh, this is a project that I'm running since 2016. So st students uh, under the courses like English language proficiency or speaking skill, they make Facebook Live presentations. And while I was writing this paper, I found quite a lot of uh, research or studies uh, based on video-generated uh, video presentations. So 
I do not see any problem with the reliability and validity, so I would ask other discussants to uh, shed light on this. Anyone interested? Uh, yeah, I can say a few of, things yeah, on that. Yeah. Yeah. Can Please. I go ahead? Please. Yeah, um, I think, you know, uh, if all students are tested on the same platform in the same way, then, you know, then it's reliable. Yes. Um, and uh, if, if the assessment, uh, when you design the assessment, if that design includes peer assessment, like, you know, um, in-time uh, peer assessment, yes. then that may not be possible with a Facebook level. I mean, my problem was that uh, my assessment uh, for a particular module was originally designed for classroom presentation and students' ability to look at different people and then address the questions um, to him or her uh, on time. So you can't really take that model immediately to a Facebook Live uh, a video model. But if the video model is there from the very beginning, then it's reliable. Yeah, the, the, as I told you, that it is something that they do from the beginning. And they do several. All right, so let's move on to a question, which is a bigger one. But this question is to Dr. Munjuru Abedin. So the question uh, was made by Takadharma Choudhury what he thinks shifting from the traditional classrooms to the new technology based class structure has added more co more work for the teachers to their already existing load so teachers are overburdened now now the responsibility of adapting a new assessment system that's fair equitable by them must not be easy under these circumstances don't you think an immediate formulation of policy guidance by the government or relevant authorities regarding assessment system for these situations should be given a priority at this point. The question yeah, is yeah, to Dr. Like a big capital letter, yes. Um, I mean, uh, in the UK, for instance, I mean, um, most of the UK universities' academic year has completed uh, by end May. And then we have June, July to, to do the, uh, you know, the, the examining of the scripts and moderation. Now, all the universities are actually formulating what they will do from September onwards. So, for instance, um, in Cambridge, uh, what they have done is um, they will divide the normal three-year uh, lectures or classes that we would normally have. They have divided the three-hour classes into three segments. And the first segment, which is known as the the lecture segment, they have actually asked us to pre-record that segment, which means uh, there shouldn't be any kind of lecture, like only the teacher talking and the students, when students are on live. So it will be pre-recorded, pre students will watch the video beforehand, and it will be only interaction that will happen um, live. So they have divided it into three parts. The lecture part was going to be pre-recorded, the consolidate part where the, uh, the, the lecturer, the teacher will give examples about the concepts, the first one hour, then um, collaborative discussion, the second one hour, and then finally, some form of workout, some form of exercise based on case study or examples, that would be the third hour. So that's how they have asked us to design our uh, next year's module. So we're uh, like currently working on it. So um, we're kind of self-recording our lectures at home midnight and upload it, you know, upload it. Uh, like here, all universities have some kind of, you know, some kind of applications, like all schools follow Edmodo, uh, like, uh, like one of our uh, discussants said. Uh, most UK schools, particularly secondary schools, they use Edmodo here, and then um, all universities use either Blackboard or Moodle. So, so I personally prefer Blackboard. So if your university can, you can talk to the, the university that whether they would actually like to subscribe to Blackboard because that is more, more suited for university students uh, where you have many other activities and many other options which are normally not available on Zoom or Google. So, but obviously I don't have much idea about the cost that it involves. Okay. 
Rabia unmute. Rabia, please unmute. The question that we have is from Mahesh Singh South. I would request him to ask the question because the question is about how to access students' performances through online mode. Um, I'm not sure what he meant. Is it like how do we um, uh, check the progress of the works that the students do online or what? I'm not sure about the question. So Mahesh Singh Soth, is he here? Can he ask the question himself? Do we have Mahesh Singh Soth with us? Yeah, we can unmute Mahesh Singh. Yeah, I, I un unmute it. My Singh, can you ask your question, please? Akibur or Atik, do you see Mahesh Singh Saud with us? Uh, I already If not, am. let's... Okay. 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 Do we have him? No, we have, but he, he cannot unmute himself. Can you switch to the next question? Uh, let's see. All right. So the next question that we have is from Ms. Nashin Asan. Uh, she told us since we have problems of the reliability and attractivity issue of MCQ questions, why don't we abolish the system from the online practices? Um, we need them, as we told that we need them for the classroom in class assessment, possibly. So doing a quick survey monkey or Mentimeter survey or doing a quick MCQ, two questions, uh, qualification questions may help us as each to understand whether our students are getting the topic, whether our students have any questions to ask. So um, I'm not sure whether we need there to is, abolish. Whether there we need is to another, abolish. There's another application which some of you might try. So it's part of the Yahoo group. So it's, a, uh, it's an uh, online um, MCQ kind of testing system called Kahoot. So Kahoot. that's K-A-H. Double OT, yeah. So, and uh, that can actually assign you a particular code number. So it has to be done individually. Yes. We make use of Kahoot, Play Breathe, okay. and other third party apps. Uh, as I told, the Daffodil International University, uh, it's well known for its smart, providing smart education even before COVID. So, COVID was basically a golden chance for Daffodil to showcase the better ability to cope with the online uh, possibilities that we have. Uh, so uh, the next question that we have uh, is from Ms. Imrana Islam again. She asks, what is your perception about the international credentials assessment in current situation? Did you mean ILTS or TOEFL? I don't know. So what is your perception about the international credentials assessment in current situation? In this blended assessment model, how far the certificates awarded in Bangladesh will be accepted and recognized internationally when students will apply for higher studies abroad? Okay, so you meant about O level and L level, as that was based on uh, the predictive grades to our students. So, Munju sir, do you have, and because you were with Cambridge assessment? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's quite undecided, like at this point, and it's uh, it's up to the individual university to kind of decide how they would like to admit you know, the students. I mean, normally it's more like an entrance barrier the, uh, of the language skills part. Like for instance, in Cambridge, I mean, when I first came here for MPhil, I mean, it's the same admission system still running. Is It's the, you know, the, the, main, the main item that they were, um, they were asking from me was that they sent me two articles very two very recently produced articles, uh, which means that it would be very hard to actually get any form of review on on those two articles. So they've asked me this is for an MPhil. Uh, they asked me to, to read the two articles. They gave me forty eight hours uh, to read the two articles and write a comparative discussion paper based on the two articles and to write about two thousand words. So uh, that was the that was the test given to me. So they said that you can do anything you like, but you just send us a comparative discussion paper based on these two articles. So that was the main main assessment yes. item. And I was yes. One thing about yeah, I was thinking about a similar kind of model for the university entrance exam question that um, you have the first barrier based on their HSC, you know, uh, marks, and then at the second level you do 
that kind of an evaluation because you have to do it. Um, you can't ask all the students to, from the remotest corner of the country to, to, to attend the public university entrance exam. So it has to be based on the national exam. But then at the department level, you create this customized, you know, um, testing um, item. So one, one question, one, one question, one yeah. question to Rabia, one question to Manzur. Uh, the decision about uh, the O level and A level, I, I guess it's an international decision, right? It's not only in Bangladesh, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so, it's like a, uh, so mm -hmm. it's not only uh, Bangladeshi students are affected. Uh, another dimension of a question, I don't know whether Imrana was asking about that, the, all this assessment that we are doing at this moment. For example, all the semester during COVID in private universities, to what extent they are reliable and valid can be a big question because uh, the sudden switch uh, without any kind of plan, because this was like, we didn't really have any plan, remember that. So we didn't have really a good discussion about it. So uh, all, the, uh, all the top uh, ranked private universities and the middle and lower, there are different way of looking at it because I guess uh, the BRAC University then we have uh, AIUB and others. You have also Bidu Rank and others like Daffodil, other universities. I think uh, they have been uh, using the online platform for a long period of time. Even before COVID, I think Google Classroom, uh, Daffodil was using for like, I, when uh, AIUB, they have their own license. I know the Microsoft team, they have been using for a long time. Rack University, they have their own uh, platform for that. Before COVID, they were actually in a way uh, prepared for uh, online platform, but the other private university they didn't really think about it. And suddenly, when we switched to online assessment, uh, I'm part of it, so I can tell you that I have number of queries about this uh, type of ass uh, assessment, where uh, the question of validity and reliability always will be there. So that's a, uh, and then when they are passing out with that transcript and certificate with a. I, I already mentioned compromise mode of assessment uh, without checking the validity and reliability and then whether in international it will be recognized. I'm sure that will not be an issue because the situation, uh, the, the conference I attended at the Jordan Air University, the Malaysian government, Philippines, Thailand, they all had to uh, kind of overnight switch to online. So it is not only Bangladesh is affected. The, the phenomenon, the global pandemic is one thing is very good that we, when we're talking about it, it's a global phenomenon now. So uh, if you're talking about only yeah. Bangladesh, no, this yeah. is almost yeah. similar in every, even Monzur was talking about connectivity in the UK. And I was very happy to know about it. There are connectivity issues even in UK. I heard from Kusul that there are connectivity issues in America as well. They have states where students are poor yeah. in connection. So uh, we are alike due to this COVID-19 situation. We are in the same pond. We are uh, trying to swim, trying to make it up. Uh, yes, Mundu sir. After you, we have the last written question. Then we'll move on to our participants' verbal questions. Yeah, I mean, just one point is about, I mean, um, I don't think that it has changed. When I was teaching uh, at uh, private and public universities in Bangladesh, I mean, in Dhaka University, we have the moderation process, but it is a very slow slow moving, um, manually uh, down process. Uh, but here uh, we have sometimes a two step moderation process. So even for the midterm exams, uh, you take 10% of the scripts and uh, you know, on, an, on a randomized uh, trial way, and then you send the scripts uh, to a second marker and then you only, you mainly look at the feedback. So you moderate the feedback, you don't moderate the, the mark. So, and I think that's something that the private universities can, can follow, like in Bangladesh, you know, to kind of benchmarking or standardize their evaluation of our students. So we have uh, the uh, question from Mohish Singh South. He has rewritten his question. It's how to evaluate students' written responses instantly through online mode in order to provide corrective feedback. Okay, that's another area of research. Is there any software to do so? Also suggest some strategies to do so. That's about corrective feedback. 
Anyone interested? Uh, maybe something connected to that would be, I think this is a feature that um, Microsoft Teams have recently added is like you use, you actually use a whiteboard. So you, you use a whiteboard and then you ask students to, to do some kind of mind mapping, which was pre previously known as brainstorming. It's like more like mind mapping. So you, you do that together on the whiteboard and then you evaluate that together. So for instance, as a student, if I write, write two, three sentences there, then uh, a classmate uh, can also uh, make corrections on that. So that can be used in a, in a classroom, a, a whiteboard. So, uh, which I don't think, um, I'm not sure which Google, platforms. Yeah, in Bangladesh. We can make use of Google Doc, where students yeah, yeah. get each other's um, uh, write-up, and then even teachers can give at the end their feedback on it. So we do that, we do make use of that. Yeah, and the other, and the other solution to that is something I've already said in my presentation is, is feed forwarding. I think maybe feed forward is an idea which which is which needs to be further explained maybe in another forum. Yes. Okay. So what we have as the next question can be a discussion in the next academic adda that is made by Mr. Mahbub Rahman again. He asked that we are inspiring and encouraging online assessments, online classes, and everything. But how would we tackle the health issues or eyesight issues that may arise due to it? Um, that can be a discussion in a separate academic adda. Uh, do you want to answer or we, uh, we can move on to the... Yes, Saidu sir, unmute yourself. Sabriya, I, I, I can. I can just try. <laughs> try. Um, I think uh, uh, this is society, uh, Bangladesh, organized one on mental health, if you remember. Last session was on mental health, and we talk about teachers' mental health. We are also talking learners' mental health. I personally believe that uh, this is a serious issue, actually. And Rabia, I know you and other colleagues. Uh, this is a tremendous pressure. And then when we are talking about and suggesting and recommending number of platforms, it makes your life so complicated. You know, when British Council was doing this thing with us. Uh, first recommendation I say try to use one platform because the moment we are trying to suggest Kahoot, then Edmodo, Google Classroom, and, and you remember the teacher's orientation is very important. And there is this tremendous mental you know, anxiety they go through because some of uh, your teachers very technologically, they are very sound and they, they are very comfortable. Some of your teachers look at their age and other, it is not only the age, of course, the willingness to use the interactive pedagogy, which becomes really difficult. And I guess uh, a professional, there is a serious anxiety that teachers are going through. This is one. And one hour uh, online class is, all, I, I believe it's like equivalent to like three hours physical session. Because one hour you are sitting idle. Now look at our session today, then you'll understand. The moment you come out of it, you'll be so exhausted. Uh, what I do, I use breakout drills. I keep on giving them, I, I say the comfort breaks, you know, uh, we didn't give today. I, I think I, we deserve kind of a 10 minutes break, music, something that you give. Okay, and it's very useful when you give 10 minutes break, play a beautiful music, and then uh, rather than taking a very rigorous two hours, three hour session. Uh, COVID-19, uh, because of the crisis, we are already uh, going through a lot of crisis. You know, every day you heard something. I, I copied my masses, you know, uh, rest in peace and inna lillahi. This I have copied in my clipboard because every day I log in, I, I see uh, around uh, me and on my Facebook friends, so many people are dying. It gives you tremendous mental issues and you have a lot of uncertainty. And then within amidst all this chaos and then uh, uh, challenges, you're also going through these online classes. Okay, and then you remember the incident of uh, the, one of the uh, colleges where the student recorded the session and they shared on the Facebook, and then it made a viral video of the teacher, and the teacher, uh, the teacher felt so humiliated. Apart from that, now let's talk about learners' point of view. Uh, from my experience, I can tell you, my students they keep on sharing that. You know, if you look at their faces, the very gloomy. It's not that they're enjoying it. One of the reasons my students are all outside Dhaka in a remote places. Some of them are joining the class under the tree. Some of them outside and they're walking. 
uh, next to the river or next to the pond because there is no internet connectivity. And uh, some of them are doing a lot of issues. Uh, today morning, I got a call from one of my female students who has a small kid. And he's saying when uh, she used to join the classes physically, she could leave the kids behind, right? And now at this moment, she's joining the class with the kid. And the kids are so interested, she, the kid keeps on pulling the mobile phone. And uh, it doesn't allow her to join the classes. Uh, working home is sometimes can be really tough and the difficult. So uh, everybody during this online uh, session and online classes, I'm sure all of us going through a tremendous psychological issues, mental issues, which is very, and also physical issues, I guess. And we really need to seriously think about it. Uh, I think the question, the question maker actually referred to some of the articles published in Prothomalo and the Daily Star. Some of the doctors are talking about uh, eyesight issues of the children mental health and other issues of online, which can have a long-term, I think, impact on their health issues. And these are issues we need to really consider. And then believing that this will also pass away. Whatever we are I just hope. <laughs> <laughs> this will also pass away. That is something that gives me strength, at least, to uh, fight or battle over all the challenges that we have at this moment. So, um, OK. Uh, so. Do we have any questions from the participants? So and anybody we... wants to take the floor. Now you can keep the floor open. Anybody wants to talk. And ask your question. We have Mezabin Rahman from Stanford University. I just saw her somewhere. Mezabin Rahman, Thank would you, you like to, would you like to talk? I just no, saw you here. I'm so happy to see you. Um, me too, me too. Same here. And as um, I'm happy to see Manzurul after so long time. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Manzurul. I took some <laughs> snapshots, you know, screenshots of you, so I would send it to you later. Good to see your photo. <laughs> I was cleaning the house, so I'm not in a good position to see my, you know, live face. Okay. Anyway, um, any particular questions, Saidur Bhai, Dr. Saidi, do you want to? Yeah, uh, Ms. Abin, we, we were talking about online assessment. Of course, there can be a question of, a major question in, uh, is validity and reliability of online assessment in private universities. I'm not including public because we are not switching to uh, online assessment at this moment. Any, uh, any, any, any comments on that? Okay, uh, there is definitely uh, some plagiarism issues going on around. Um, I would actually, um, um, I mean, I will tell you about two of my experiences. One is from University of London and another is from my own university here at Stanford University, Bangladesh. Okay, and also Jagannath. Jagannath is going to going online soon, very soon. Okay, from September, they will yeah. do it online as well. Uh, I think it's the first public university which is going online. Well, uh, I just had my midterm exam uh, from, uh, at Stanford and we used Google Classroom, okay, for assessment. And you know, because we are not quite equipped. So personally, I use Zoom, Google Classroom, or together because the students, they had to log into Zoom, all right? If they, it was an, uh, on Google Classroom, we, we can ask questions like, you know, um, uh, short question answers, and also poll style question answers. That's it. That's what I did for, for, time, for the timing. And some other teachers, they use some other software. Um, I don't know where did they get it from, but there is no uniform practice over here. No uniformity. But uh, for class, you know, I use actually for class activities because all my students, they live outside. Dhaka. Most of my students, 99% of my students, they live outside Dhaka. So there is a net issue. Okay, so I have to keep it in mind as well. So um, I use Facebook group as uh, an alternative for my class activities because we do not have Moodle space or other things. And then I use Google Classroom for assessment. And I think for the timing, it's Google Classroom is fine, it's okay, because it's timed assessment, all right? I do not give them like 24 hour assessment. Like it's two hours and within these two hours, they have to do this and that. And there is like survey kind of questions. 
full style of questions. Uh, we do that. Uh, most of our teachers are doing that. And Zoom, and we have BD Ren, and you know, I'm doing these um, regularly. And like some of the classes that involves um, like speaking assessment. So Zoom is one portal platform that I use. And also, I also do, you know what, for, uh, for the first class to introduce them. So over, uh, over Facebook group or Facebook page, they send me their, you know, a, a small clip of video introducing themselves Okay, so I try to make it more interactive. Sometimes, sometimes yes, I involve music as well in between. I give them a short break because one and a half hour class and I give them a 15, 15 minutes short break and they have a, you know, they, they have a breathing space. But I'm still thinking about this assessment. How could we do it more authentic, more, uh, I mean, less plagiarism, you see. Um, and recently, University of London, they, they you know, they held their uh, final exam. And because at, at, at the beginning, at first, they wanted to, wanted to do it on ProctorTrack. I think, Manzoor, you know about ProctorTrack, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. So, but, you know, uh, because University of London, they have like 50,000 students all around the world. And somehow ProctorTrack, crash and it did not work. So what they did, uh, they have really virtual learning uh, environment. So, you know, they posted the question and they had a timed assessment. So the students downloaded the question paper and they answered on like, on the paper, on the paper and they saved it as um, in in a word format, any kind of word format, and they had to upload it within the time, specified time. So that's what they did. And, and I have heard incidents then that they also faced uh, plagiarism issues. Some of the uh, incidents have been reported that some students, they hired people to write their essays, okay? And, <laughs> And sometimes that they share questions. So, you know, all around the world, everyone, I think almost every university is actually facing the same situation. And uh, recently I did some, uh, some online, online workshop with uh, Harvard University where some, some like um, Ravi also told that it, in USA, the situation is same as well, um, you know, this is United States, that doesn't mean they have all the facilities or, or, or whatsoever. They're still 50% poor, the students. Okay, and all the like, um, still, till they, the rich get the better education and poor, they have to struggle. So, and, but what are they doing? The school boards, they are actually providing net connection to the students. You understand? Uh, those who are poor, and also food on, and uh, whatever support they needed. So, so my point is that... Mr. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you. I think Munzuri is about to leave. Oh, oh, okay. and, sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, I, I'll hear from you later. Munzuri, uh, we have already crossed our time, two hours and 30 minutes. Wow. <laughs> so we, we were supposed to have a one hour and a half. Anyway, but it is wonderful yeah, because I, the, yeah. I set the tone by talking yeah. a bit more. <laughs> no, that's fine. That is, you were uh, you wanted you yeah. to talk. That's fine. Uh, this was our first academic after, and then we are going through number of experiences, and in future, of course, we'll look into it. I think uh, I was looking at the participants. We started with fifty-one. We could retain thirty-nine. So it's good. The thirty-nine people actually stayed back till two hours and a half which is really good one for me at least. I, I can understand that. Uh, for everyone, uh, I can tell you that we'll, we'll uh, publish the recorded session on our page and the YouTube, and you'll, you'll be able to access the, uh, the session. Rabia, over to you. Yeah, okay. So uh, thank you very much, Manjusar, for joining. We can have one uh, separate academic update on the criticism that you may have on movies, because I know you are a movie fanatic. 
and I forgot to say that. So we can have one academic ADA on that as well. We can have academic ADA on mental health of students, mental health of teachers. We can have another academic ADA on assessments. We can bring the policy makers too. So uh, there are possibilities. And if the answers that were given in, in through today's academic ADA, if it helps someone, if it helps some teachers, that will be something for our, uh, that will be the uh, takeaway of this uh, session. And that will let us move, uh, keep on. Uh, so uh, thank you, Monju, sir, for joining. I know you're busy, uh, but you agreed. And then you uh, cooperated with any queries that I had and asked you to um, answer. So thank you very much once again. And thank you for your informa informative session. I learned a lot personally. And uh, thanks to uh, the founder of Tissol Bangladesh for giving me this floor because I shared this idea that I want academic ADDA where our uh, participants will talk more, we will talk less. So this was the first session. We will uh, have more participants talk from the next session. We want participants to talk more, ask questions, give their, uh, share their experience, give their insight, share their insights with us. So uh, that will be done. We'll be doing it every month. Uh, so we are coming uh, with the next one by the end of September. So if you have better suggestion, you can always uh, uh, keep it posted on our Facebook page uh, at TESOL Society of Bangladesh. So uh, thanks to Ati, thanks to Akib, Akibur. Thank you very much, Bhaya. You did uh, a wonderful job. I know that your parents are not well. You are supporting your father, but still you did not um, leave a point to uh, complain about. So. Um, Thanks to everyone. Thanks to the participants. Thanks for being with us. Uh, we are out of time and we're sorry about it. Over to you, Saidu sir. No, thank you so much. Uh, already, uh, I think uh, Rabia uh, already greeted from on behalf of the uh, association. On a personal note, Manzurul Abedin, my uh, younger brother, which I keep on posting on Facebook, Tariq Al Hog actually believed that we have similarities. So we are the mother, we are the uh, same brothers. And when I posted and Tariq Al Hog actually said, yeah, there are a number of similarities between Munzurul Abidin and Saidur Rahman. Same mistake is done by Professor uh, Shaidullah sir from Russia University. Slightly so, younger. Like younger brother, yeah. Uh, he looked like younger actually. <laughs> so with that note, uh, thank you so much with all the good memories that I had mm -hmm. in Munzurul Abidin at Cambridge. Would you have a, a group yeah. photo? Yeah, yeah. Uh, our, our volunteer is taking that, I guess. Uh, Atik, are you taking that, please? The script. Can I request uh, the participants to switch on uh, your video just to take a picture? As per customer, we keep on taking uh, pictures. With your approval, please. Yes, please turn on. I'm your... giving you some time. Now, let's give them some time to show their faces. And Atik, can you take the picture, please? Atik and Akib. Sir, done, sir. Thank you, sir. Done. Uh, thank you for the wonderful session. There are three more events coming on our Facebook page. Uh, you can check it with the announcement. Uh, Akib, can you just announce the next event? It's quick, 30 second time. Uh, our next event is on 23rd. There will be Ada from Pakistan. Actually, she works in Pakistan, but uh, she's from Brisbane. She'll be joining us on 23. And the event is already in our place. You can register there. We want to see you there. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Manju, sir, do you want to say anything? Uh, a huge thanks to, to everyone. Back to Bangladesh. And Manju, uh, your 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 on the film, we're looking forward. To just the idea. I think it will be wonderful. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for participating. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.